Yo, what's up, guys? How you doing today? Hello. Hello, everyone. What up, Chris? What up, sweet potato? Gothics? Kicks? Cats? Which cat are we talking about? You gotta be specific. <laughs> uh, let's, let's talk about the Crusades. What about them? <laughs> Don't mind my my protein sludge. I had a little bit of a sweet tooth. And so this is uh, as good as it's going to get. Uh, let's talk about anime. What about anime? Oh, hello, hello. Did you see any mermaids? Any mermaids to die, Granny? What about mermaids? What? Did I see any mermaids? Well, black people don't swim, so uh, unless it's the TV, I wouldn't have been able to see said mermaids. You understand? Eggs are best cruelty and cage-free. They're nice orange yolked. You know what I learned about cage-free eggs? It's a fun fact. This is, this is also, uh, it links to my very short-lived vegan uh, time. <laughs> um, I saw a one PETA video and I was like, I'm going vegan. That lasted like a whole 24 hours. But uh, what I learned about cage-free eggs, because uh, I was looking for alternatives. Okay, maybe I don't have to, you know, not eat meat or not eat some type of animal product. I can just, you know... Make sure they're killed humanely. First of all, there's no such thing. <laughs> um, but cage-free uh, doesn't necessarily mean not crammed like sardines. I actually saw a video of a, of a barn where they said cage-free chickens. And it was like thousands of chickens trampling over one another. There was no cages, but they were crammed in there. <laughs> so it's really our perception. And I think these labels help us feel better. I'm sure there are certain... Um, uh, you know, farms and whatnot that try to make the animals as comfortable as possible and kill them humanely, as humanely as possible. But I think for the most part, it's really to soothe our feelings. Uh, hi, Joseph. How are you doing? Mm-hmm. Yep, I can relate on a pita crap. Only 24 hours, then I looked into them. Yeah, that, that was, it was, but again, it shows you how easily people can uh, be scared into reacting. Um, and really, if you think about it in the most absolute sense, the animals are going to die anyway, because animals eat each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and I think, again, I, and I know people don't agree with me on this, but even like house pets and stuff like that, like I love my cat. I've had a dog before. We look at house pets in a different way. <laughs> and it's like, mm, I think in some ways, the vegans have a point of where do you draw the line? But in the other ways, they don't have a point because they're still forgetting that animals are going to die anyway by other animals. Interesting thought experiments. I get my chicken eggs from my mama's house. My mama's hens. <laughs> my mama's house. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had a chicken coop. I'm gonna tell you, man. I I wish. Hi, Gun. How are you doing today? Uh, slacking on work, I see. Hmm? Hi, Blue. How are you? Of course, I remember you, Blue. Of course. Hello, Abel. And how are you doing? The dude set himself on fire. Oh yeah. Did you guys hear about that? Hmm. <clears throat> Excuse my sludge drinking. Um, the quality of eggs, milk, meat is much better. We've got local stuff in my area, and one of our family friends has chickens. By the way, did you know, because I, again, I go down these rabbit holes, and I'm just like, this. it's a whole new world. The government's lying to our face. <laughs> did you know? That a lot of the food, I don't know about in America, but definitely in China, a lot of the f meat that they eat is fake. 
Did you know this? I watched an entire compilation of how they're making counterfeit eggs and counterfeit meat using like plastic. It, it, it's wild. It looks pretty believable, but they showed the process of how to make it. And I'm like, how much of that stuff is making it into the States? You have to wonder. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Um, let's see. Uh, that was wild. Why set yourself set yourself on fire? So let's talk about that really quickly. Because I'm not going to show the video for obvious reasons. It's, it's I don't know. So there was um, uh, an ex-military individual who set himself on fire to make a stand against the war happening between Israel and the Palestinians. And while he was on fire, he was screaming, free Palestine, free Palestine. And then he died. Uh, a lot of people on the political left are, are uh, linking that to other people throughout history who have also done similar acts of uh, protesting by lighting themselves on fire. And uh, I think, well, number one, I think it is uh, sickening to equate that act as something that's heroic. Because if the argument is the person was raising awareness, we were already aware. The war is still not over. So you killed yourself for no reason. And But I think, for me, the thing that I find very interesting about this is how it's... <laughs> It's in a way, it feels like this is some type of comparison to what a messiah would be. Someone dying for the sins of others. And so sacrificing himself with fire to somehow erase the sin of war, but it doesn't actually work like that. I think that's the thing that's very troublesome is like, yeah, obviously there was some type of psychological issue going on there, but uh, the response of people looking at that video, I'm like, that's very disturbing. There's been an old dude hanging around one of the overpasses on 95 with a free Palestine sign and a ceasefire and all that. He was even waving it when there was a brief ceasefire. Tone deaf. Very bizarre. Very, very bizarre. Um, <clears throat> Vietnam Buddhists did that, but other Buddhists shunned that and they don't believe in wasting your precious life. Yeah, I don't. I didn't see the point of that. So that prayers for that person's family, because that is, I mean, yeah, I don't know. That that that's that's wild. Um, the fact that I look on half of the products in the grocery stores and see that there's a bioengineered food label product on there. Did you guys ever notice that? It'll blow your mind. Go to your pantry. And pick up something and look at the label. I will bet you $2 that it will say bioengineered on the label. I just noticed this pattern and I said, wait a minute, how long have I been eating this? <laughs> what does that mean? This is why I want a garden, man. I want a garden. I want my own farm animals. I want a lake. That's what I want, man. A girl can dream, right? <laughs> All right, I had a little message here from Blue Links World who said, thank you, by the way, for the $5 super. Um, why does it say 10? Is that a 10 month? I'm not sure. Uh, good afternoon, Gothics. I was wondering if you had any advice for me starting a channel or podcast. Hmm. Well. It depends what type of advice you're looking for, <laughs> because I can give you there's two different types of advices. I think I can give you advice from the business perspective, how to market, how to retain viewers, how to how to, um, you know, get your name out there. And then I can also give you advice on how to not lose your damn mind. 
<laughs> and how to prepare, brace yourself for the angry woke mob the moment you say something that they don't like, because there will always be something that you say that they don't like. <laughs> Um, so that, I mean, it depends what type of advice you're looking for. That's kind of open-ended, but I will say I get this feeling that the market is shifting a little bit in the sense that, uh, podcasts aren't as popular as they were a couple of years ago. I, I can sense that there is some type of shift happening where people are just sick of podcasts. So something to think about. Hello, fiery, but mostly peaceful. And how are you doing? Granny, you owe me $2. Nothing in my house is bioengineered. Do you have food in your house? All right, that's my next question. <laughs> I'm ahead of everyone because my roommate is a former sous chef and his body is very sensitive to fake food. That is, you know what? Okay, kudos to you, a sous chef. Interesting, I have no such thing. In fact, for dinner, you know what we're having? Hamburger helper. <laughs> helper. <laughs> We're going to have hamburger helper because we are adults. My husband said he loved having that. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's just buy it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Legit. Can we all just live in the woods and not be a cult? <laughs> Fresh air, decent people, and there has to be a coffee shop, non-negotiable. Yo, if we li if we had to live, I say had to as if it would be terrible. If we had to live in the woods and just use the most natural, basic items, yo, I would be making coffee out of anything. I got you, man. I'm going to barista all this stuff up right now because, yeah, I love coffee. Mm. So good. Don't you like wood chips in your Burger King chicken sandwich? Not particularly, no. <laughs> My content is the best thing since sliced bread. But is sliced bread actually that good? What about Portuguese bread? Have you tried Portuguese bread? I highly recommend it because it's quite good. <laughs> Let me move this down a little bit. Okay, let's see. Do, 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 do um all right there was a super here let me pull it up from blue and blue says business perspective mostly and how to brace myself okay so business perspective you have to do market research you have to get a feel for what the people want now just like the political realm political leaders will create a solution to a problem. Usually it's a problem that they themselves create, but nonetheless, they are providing a solution solution to a problem. So what solution can you offer to existing problems? If I had to guess, the majority of people that are watching my content aren't watching it because I'm black. At least I hope not. <laughs> I think they're watching it because I have something to offer in the commentary space or they just think I'm weird and entertaining, one of the other. Uh, so find out what your target audience is and then from there, like who, like who is it you're trying to make content for and then figure out what those people want. There are a few ways you can do this. I know there's some websites that you can look up to see what like trending topics are, to see what people are clicking on. Um, but the easiest way, in my opinion, to get started is to simply just start uploading something that you enjoy making content on or, or your podcast, whatever, and then seeing what sticks, what is bringing more people in. And then from there, you just uh, fiddle around with like the title and the thumbnail and just experiment and see what people tend to gravitate more towards. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps. As far as bracing yourself, um, don't put all your eggs in one basket and think that um, uh, basically prepare for the worst. If your channel, like my channel, got hacked a couple of weeks ago and I thought it was, that was it. <laughs> um, and I was thinking, well, what do I do now? So you always have to have a, another source of income. So don't put all of your uh, eggs in one basket. Try to diversify your content. Upload clips on all the social media platforms. Have a backup. I have Rumble. Um, 
you know, have something where someone can find you uh, when the woke mob comes and finds you because they will find you. <laughs> I hope that helps. Uh, I also had a super here from, yo, Haitian King. How are you doing, buddy? Hope all is well with you and your husband. I know it's been a while. Continue to be great. I am proud of you both. Yo, man, it's good to hear from you. I hope you think things are doing well with you on your side. Man, Haitian King was one of those, uh, there was like a few people back when COVID started where we were just in Discord for hours just messing around. <laughs> Because you don't really have, you know, during COVID, like, what were people doing? Just staying home, being online. So we were just hanging out. And then and then we all just kind of went our separate separate ways, you know? I don't know why. Maybe it's a black thing. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, is Rumble worth it? I think Rumble is, is worth it, depending on what you're talking about. I get more views on here than I do Rumble. I get more money on here than I do Rumble. But like anything that has potential, you have to start somewhere. And I want to see Rumble succeed. I want to see Rumble, <clears throat> more specifically, kick YouTube's ass. <laughs> and in order for that to happen, you got to start somewhere. So that's sort of like my backup platform. Although I am right now streaming on Rumble. Um, I'm also streaming on Kick right now and Twitch and YouTube. Take that, Twitch exclusivity. <laughs> So yeah, uh, I think it's worth it. Yeah. Darn it, Granny. Be a woman of your word. Did you just assume my gender? Excuse me? I've heard advice from a gaming YouTuber that you have to hit the right niche to really blow up. Have to be ahead of something and a hope the hype for the subject lives up. No, it's true. I think that's really, really sound advice. Yes. Like if if I really think about it, when I, when I started blowing up on Twitch, the stuff that I was doing was unique. It was weird. <laughs> like not, most people on Twitch were playing video games. Not everyone was playing video games while playing dress up, while putting face makeup on and dancing to soundboards and doing improv skits with their audience like that's a very specific niche and now i don't think i'm in a specific niche per se but i think if i really thought about it i could create something unique that would tie commentary into the stuff that i'm doing right now i just have to think about it i have to think about it right now i'm chilling but i think that's really sound advice I separate my channels and try different types of content on my second channel. Since I already have a dedicated topic on my main, I have another channel to experiment with. Yeah, that's a good idea. Me, on the other hand, I just, I say I do things, you know. I've never changed the description on my YouTube channel. So if someone gets mad because I'm not uh, consistently uploading the, a certain type of content, I just refer them to my bio, which says I do things. And technically, I'm not lying. <laughs> Can I borrow $20? Boy, what do you think? You think I'm rich? I got no money. <laughs> I got no money. Oh, man. <clears throat> How do I say this? Jihun Shin? Jihun Shin. Hey, Gothics, I want to start off by saying you are inspirational. Stop it. You stop it right now. That said, as a Korean and a fellow Christian, I have two questions I have been meaning to ask you. Please ask away. I'd be so happy to answer. Uh, one and only Stormy. Hi, Gothics. It's been a minute since I seen you on the Purple Palace. Are you on Kick too? I am. I'm streaming. I'm dual streaming on Kick. I don't got no content on Kick. I got no followers. No one knows I'm on Kick except for you right now. Right now. I just sent her $20. Man, shh, shh, shh. I can't be telling people about that. Chill, man. Just exposing me like that, man. What's going on? <laughs> um, yo, Emily Rose, thank you so much for becoming a member. I really appreciate that. 
uh, hey, you need a few bucks because I don't have it. <laughs> Can I borrow a hundred dollars? Well, I mean, if you guys saw my video yesterday, um, technically Black History Month is just about over. So you have a little bit of time left to give me a thousand dollars in reparations. I don't make the rules, but this is what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to pay respects to people of color, specifically women of color, because we're more important than black men. I don't make the rules. So yes, um, link in bio, a hundred to a thousand dollars in reparations. Thank you. I have to be, you know what? I have to also say this, that I'm joking because I'm trying to make my, my contact information more available for uh, people that watch my videos. And I've been getting some emails from people who think I'm serious and they're trying to lecture me. And I'm like, bro, and I think that's the most annoying thing about political correctness is a lot of people are so fed up with it that sarcasm is just a lost art. Like, it, there's no such thing as joking anymore. It's just, how dare you? <laughs> uh, I cringed and died simultaneously watching that video this morning. I wish it was that easy to beg for money, but not beg for money. <laughs> oh, man. I got tired of being crapped on as a black man. Isn't that silly? It's so silly. Like, I don't understand it. And, and it's so weird because you'll you'll hear. It's like you'll hear the rhetoric and it, and it contradicts itself because you'll hear from a lot of people. Black man ain't shit. And then you'll hear, I don't want to emasculate black men. And it's like, bro, you can't say both. You know, can we just agree that some people, male or female, white or black or whatever other colors they are, some people are just bad. I mean, we're all technically bad. I'm also bad. That's why I needed a savior. <laughs> Easy plug right there. Um, we're all bad. So let's just agree on that. It's not specific to race or gender. Question number one, would you say that the anti-white racism may have stemmed from the notion that the Nazis and the KKK were the absolute worst in history? Would you say that the anti-white racism may have stemmed from the notion that, no, I, I don't think so. I think the anti-white anti racism has stemmed from uh, a communist, uh, the communist ideology. So uh, I have a lot of books on communism that I always recommend reading. Uh, the Naked Communist is my top book. It has the most information I would say in it. And um, in a communist uprising, in order to uh, push for a communist revolution, you have to break society apart. Now, how do you break society apart that is pretty much done with racism? Like if we were to think about chattel slavery and, and blacks being enslaved and picking cotton, we're long past that. So how do you break up a society that isn't uh, involved in that type of stuff anymore? You have to create a new problem. So how do you create a new problem while weaponizing race is you have to convince black people that they are oppressed and you have to convince them that they are the oppressors. and in any other society where there's been a communist uprising, you'll see the same template, oppressed versus oppressors. So if it's not black versus white, it's LGBT versus Christians. It's uh, pro-choice versus uh, the patriarchy or feminism versus the patriarchy. They'll say you are oppressed and you are the oppressor. So naturally the oppressed they want to fight against the oppressors and that, you know, breaks apart society more. So it's not because Nazis and the KKK were the worst in history, because I think there probably was even more worse things than that. 
But I will say, but I, I think it's just a matter of creating victims and enemies out of people, if that makes sense. It's divide and conquer, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. This July, I'm going to see big, bold, beautiful, bodacious battleship North Carolina. Also, I got fired from Walmart, finally. Oh, that's a good thing? Oh, man. You going to see a battleship in North Carolina? Ooh. Yeah, they had to create more racism because there was a demand for a lack of supply. Yeah. See, if you really think about it, um, uh, like a lot of the social justice narratives presents itself as something that is meant to help society. Uh, but it, it actually is creating more problems. And I think the reason that it's creating more problems is number one, it's creating a problem out of thin air, a problem that wasn't already there, it's creating. And, and, and it's exploiting things that people technically already have the ability to resolve on their own without needing social justice. So for example, if we take the abortion argument, and say it's a woman's right to choose. There is a solution to this problem. And the solution is self-control. The majority of abortions that take place are people just having sex before marriage. That's, that's a fact. So you have the solution. But instead of telling people that they have the solution, you have to convince them that you're victims. If you look at the black versus white thing, a lot of people will say, we got to get rid of racism. Okay, how do you define racism? Microaggressions, complicit bias, and, and white supremacy, basically um, paranoia <laughs> that everyone is out to get you because of your skin color. Now, how do you resolve that? You stop getting the blacks to look at everything through a racial lens. Problem solved. <laughs> and and if you go down the list it's the same exact thing it's like there's already a solution but they're not actually giving you the solution they're saying that the solution is to go after these people which the ironic thing about it is that if they if they're successful we're all going to lose our rights <laughs> um let's see no budget less says black history month is cringe used to single out anyone blacks amongst a group of people i couldn't stand it as the only as the only if not one or two black kid in my class oh and gothics is a witch no 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 i used to be a witch okay i used to be a witch thank you not anymore over on rumble i see bad news who says soup and number says at least with rumble you can speak far more freely than you can on youtube that is a fact over on kick Oh, one and only Stormy says new here. We missed the boat on White History Month. Too late now. Wait, hold on. Isn't, isn't, when is White History Month? Because Jesse Lee Peterson, he puts a White History Month. Is that already gone? Damn. People get so pissed when he does that. I think that's fair. <laughs> oh, man. It's funny how the commies in America conveniently ignore what Japan did during World War II and only focus on the Nazis. They have selective, selective hearing. It's, um, you know, if people actually were interested in educating themselves, we wouldn't be in this mess. Um, have you seen the new Illinois bill proposed? No, what's that bill? Let me look it up. What's the Illinois bill? Four, eight, seven, six. Let's look it up. Illinois House bill number 4876, redefining child abuse and sparking controversy. An, an Illinois groundbreaking bill proposes including denial of gender affirming care and abortion under child abuse. This legislation sparks debate over parental rights. It's, I'm not surprised. You th this isn't even the peak, I'm telling you guys. It's gonna keep getting worse. 
going to keep getting worse, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised by this. This is, <laughs> and it's, it, and, and again, one of the things that I, the last couple of years have, I, I guess, been frustrated in is like when people tell me, stop talking about God. It's like, all right, we won't talk about God anymore. We'll completely remove God out of the equation. So accept the consequences of what that looks like, <laughs> because this is what that looks like. <laughs> and it's just going to keep getting worse. It's unfortunate. It's sad. Um, let me see. There was another super that I missed. Actually, a few. One from Tara. I can only do five bucks. My weekly work comp checks are only 280 This sucks. Oh, my goodness, Tara. You don't have to give me five bucks, but thank you. Hello, babe. You're staring at me. Did I? Whoa. I love you. Give me a smooch. Love you. Thank you. Apparently, I broke 100K in my uh, video about testing positive for white privilege. <laughs> I just had fun with that video, man. That was, that was a good time. Um, so uh, there was another... Thank you, Tara. That's really, really kind of you. Um, there was another super that I missed because I'm a really bad streamer. Where is it? Where is it? I don't know where it is. There is one that I missed. I cannot find it. There is one from... I don't know where it is, but I'm going to read it here. Uh... Deadpool! Kid! I thought libs and social justice warriors hate masculinity. Well, they all kind of contradict each other, if you think about it. Yeah, they all contradict each other. I need to do a video on that because it's 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 actually it's actually kind of so. My my husband was telling me that like in the gaming, I know not everyone here is is a, a gamer, but in the gaming industry. There has never been a short supply of voluptuous female characters in video games. They usually exaggerate the assets of the female video game character. And now a lot of people on the uh, woke left are upset because that's an unrealistic beauty standard. You shouldn't sexualize a woman in a video game. And it's like, okay, all right. I'll I'll take that argument, but then the same side will be about sexual liberation. Again, I you are open to have your argument out in the ether, but at least have it make sense. <laughs> and and all of these things contradict each other. <laughs> all the things that they advocate for, it's like it just contradicts each other. But again, if we're being honest. The right does the exact same thing. Maybe not in the same context, but the right eats each other. Political ideologies that are founded just on politics and not anything that transcends politics eventually is going to eat each other. Yo, Deadpool Kid says, I think I have a solution. We, we have an all-out rumble on one side, black team, and the other white team. If there are any survivors, they'll decide if they want to go on or take a break or call it even. Wait, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? A rumble? A racial rumble? Is that a... What are you talking about? I'm so confused. <laughs> um, let me see. It's getting to a point where we shouldn't tell the government you have a child. Just homeschool their kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what's happening. Yeah. Now, does anyone, aside from breaking up the nuclear family, and I'm going to, I see another super chat I'm going to get to in a second. Aside from breaking up the nuclear family, why do you think uh, they, would, they would endorse a bill like this to redefine the term child abuse to also include denial of gender affirming care and abortion? Why do you think they would want to do that? Aside from breaking up the nuclear family. 
this there's a multitude of reasons but i'm just curious rosario says and they have to invent hate crimes that never happen see matthew shepherd yeah i learned about that somewhat recently i didn't know too much about it but it's it's kind of scary how far back and it makes you rethink about anything that's been talked about in history like were they actually telling the truth like for example since it's black history month i'm i'm sure a lot of people here idolize martin luther king jr and a civil rights leader good guy good ideas yeah <laughs> There's a lot of things that I learned about him that I'm like, oh, okay, he's literally parroting the same talking points that BLM was parroting. So he was a communist. So we're idolizing a communist. The concept of uh, those snippets, those audio snippets that we would always hear from MLK Jr. always played over and over and over again. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, not judging people uh, on the color of their skin. Okay, makes sense, logical. But yeah, he was a communist. Kind of sick. Hello, Jeff. How are you doing? The nuclear family has exploded. Steril sterilization plus money, 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 I guess. Mm. How is abortion a child abuse? Well, I think what they're saying is if your child gets pregnant, denying that child from getting an abortion is child abuse which I mean in the, in the, in the reverse, the, the, the child getting aborted is child abuse. If you really want to go take it that route. Um, yeah. They want more control to push the trans agenda. Yeah. So, so here's what I think about a bill like this. I think, first of all, yeah, it breaks up the nuclear family. It separates them. Um, by the way, I was in a documentary called Plandemic 3. Uh, it's free to watch online. You have to search it because uh, I think it's called plandemicseries.com because the web, the search engines, they block it. Uh, and there was a segment where it talked about this. And what they're doing is they're separating families. And when they separate a kid from the family because the parents won't affirm the gender of that child's choosing what they're doing is number one they're they're raising another generation of democrat voters because again we brought up the topic of creating an environment of oppressed versus the oppressors and the oppressed in this situation are the trans people and since transgenderism is a manufactured ideology they are essentially saying we are going to keep creating more voters for the Democrat Party, because if your rights, your trans rights only come from one political party, then logically you need more voters for that political party. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you're sterilizing people. So if the notion is that America or whatever other area in the world is overpopulated, what better way to thin the herd? and to sterilize them. And then on top of that, you're also adding in human trafficking. Because now with human trafficking, it's like if we're saying a child is mature enough to take puberty blockers and take hormones and and have gender reassignment procedures, then why aren't they mature enough to do other things that mature adults would be able to do? Use your imagination. It's sick. It's evil. And unfortunately, this is the this is the problem is that uh, people are people still haven't come to terms that um, you're either with God's standards or you're with the other guy. There's no neutrality. And I think in an effort to make everyone feel good not hurt anyone's feelings not to upset the mob people are too afraid to draw hard lines and they're essentially saying you know doors wide open whatever happens happens because that's what's happening the reason we got to this point is because too many people were afraid to say this isn't right it's sad it's unfortunate 
Hello, Stasen. Too Casual said, I had a thought the other day. It feels like everything is being turned torn down on purpose. Make everything worse so a savior can step in and fix it. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. There's actually, if, if you think about this from a psychological standpoint, there have been lots of studies on this. There, there is a way to brainwash people. It's actually very possible to do it. And um, if we take COVID, for example, and you instill fear in people and you think and you get them to believe that this virus is going to kill everyone. And then you say, OK, we don't know what's happening. This virus, it came out of nowhere. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to stay home. We're going to flatten the curve for just two weeks. And then two weeks turns into two months, turns into a couple of months. And next thing you know, people are being stir crazy, being locked up in the house because they got nothing to do. And during that time, they're so anxious to get back to normal that once a vaccine was introduced or or once something else was introduced to help, it's like they're ready to jump for that solution. So in a way, in a way, if, if you have like BLM tore people apart and then COVID put people back together in a, in a weird, demented sense, because now that's something that we can unite on. It's like, oh, these are my people. We're all in agreement that we got to flatten the curve and not kill grandma by super spreading. So it's it's a it's a technique of of um, agitating people until they're so like stressed and and they're uh, desperate for a resolution that they'll jump on the first thing possible because they're just they're so hungry to get back to normal. Like it's an actual technique. So so if you look at the border that's wide open. If you look at how messed up uh, the school system is and all the crap they're teaching kids, if you look at all of the the upticks in crimes because people are very lenient uh, with uh, all the laws right now, right? If we if we just consider all of these factors and how it seems like America is just descending into chaos, the next thing that's going to happen is you're going to have the political savior come in and say you have a crime problem. You have a homeless problem. You have a you have a human trafficking problem. They might not actually admit that, but you have these problems, and these are the solutions that we are going to provide. But you got to vote for me. It's disgusting. Disgusting. Uh, let me go and look at the super chats because I've missed a few because I've been ranting for a little bit. Please, apologies. Apologies. Let me scroll. Disco Cobra, thank you so much for the super. Almost had a point of weakness today. Mm. I had a dream last night that was suggestive. Later in the day, was feel was feeling urges to lust. Did not fully cave, but was close. Prayed multiple times. Prayer is a powerful tool. Absolutely. You know what also helps is saying it out loud. I rebuke that. I reject it. Why did I have that thought? Get out of my head. Yeah, that's what I would do. But I'm happy for you, man. Proud, proud of you. It's, a, it's, definitely, a, it's definitely a struggle. Like, I can understand that. Um, let me scroll down a little bit. I missed a few sippers. Uh, Ty, Ty Rai. Hi, right? Tay, Tayer. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm going to call you T. Hi, T. Amnesty International supports abortion and has stated one in four children are aborted around the world. They want money for unsafe, for safe abortion places. That too, you can monetize it. That's kind of sick. I mean, it's not kind. It's very sick. Um, there was another, I think that was it. Okay. Let me scroll up because there was a lot of chats going on that I have missed out on. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Be sure not to stream too long. Got to keep that soul intact. Absolutely retro. Absolutely. I, uh, I only try to stream for like two hours. Uh, I, I'm not even going to promise upload uh, doing more streams right now. I'm, I'm committing to two streams a week, two hours at a time. I'm not going to promise more. 
because I don't think my soul is prepared for that yet. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I have not heard Tom McDonald's new song. I have not. Is it good? I find it ironic that California voted you needed to be 21 to buy cigarettes, but an unbelievable medical procedure. Uh, go for it, 10-year-olds. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's see. Uh, this is going to get worse before it gets better. After 60% of human population is gone, then restart. This is part of the plan. Uh, we need more Christians in the media making content and fighting the BS. Yeah. I mean, and I, I don't even necessarily think Christians because I think God can use anyone. Um, and just turns out in my case, I ended up becoming a Christian anyway. <laughs> but, you know, I think uh, I think God can use anyone. But, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. And also there needs to be more Bible believing Christians in the media because it, I don't know if you guys noticed too. I feel like there's been an uptick of, of people talking about Jesus, which is great. I love that the, the topic of religion is not so alarming anymore, but with that comes, uh, an added, um, an added obstacle of these uh christians <laughs> that are basically just using the label and normalizing sin so if they only have control of the conversation then people get this warped perception of what christianity is so yeah i like that religion is being talked about more but that's also something that i've noticed is there's a lot of uh progressive christians popping up uh, that's very interesting. Meanwhile, Forbes was saying, do your own research is a dangerous phrase. Oh, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. The sin I struggle with the most is sloth. I'm too lazy and ADHD doesn't make things much better. Trying to change. I'm cleaning off my desk while watching. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, um, one thing I recommend is, is uh, making a habit of something small that you can commit to. Like I said, with my streaming and my, me making content the last year, I haven't been consistent at all. So I'm saying, okay, the bare minimum of what I can commit to two videos a week two streams a week and that's it and i keep doing that rinse and repeat and once i feel like i am consistent enough with that i'll add something else in so don't overwhelm yourself if it's something as simple as cleaning your room making your bed every single morning without fail do that and also make a schedule too like when you wake up what's the first thing that you do boom 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 make a list like that they even have apps for it if you really need that like i have a, a schedule on my calendar and it tells me, okay, wake up, pray, gym, Bible, coffee, work. <laughs> Shower and poop is somewhere in there. <laughs> uh, but there's a system. So if I wake up and go straight for my phone, I already failed. <laughs> I already messed up. Why does everyone think white men are bad? I don't think white men are bad. I have several relationships with non-white girls, but society's really dedicated to making my partner feel like I was taking advantage of her. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what to say, man. It's, yeah, I, I don't know. Some, I mean, it's, it's going to take some time. Some people are going to wake up. I've seen a lot of people the last couple of years that we were we were cool and then it feels like overnight they became radicalized and started believing a lot of this nonsense. 
Uh, and I think they'll wake up. But we gotta pray for them. We gotta we gotta be patient with them. Um, because here is, I mean, this is the reality of the world that we live in: is that everyone is a sheep in one way or another, and you have the option of either following the shepherd, meaning Jesus, or you follow the world. And the world has different, uh, different messiahs, if you will. You got the science. You got the activists, the politicians, the teachers, the psychologists, your friends, your family. Everyone is a sheep. Um, and unfortunately, if you take that route of following the world, the, the people are fallible. They're inconsistent. They're wishy-washy. And they will lead you off of a cliff, usually, more often than not. Don't go off of the cliff. Follow God. <laughs> I just want a relationship and a family. Racism, clearly. Yes, don't you know the nuclear family is racist? Hmm. I am no sheep, I'm a dragon. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> Identify yourself. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Absolutely. I put a book next to my phone, read a chapter before I touch this thing. That's awesome. That is so awesome. Drink water. That was tough. <laughs> I do. Oh, man. All right. <clears throat> Hydration is good for your skin. Yes, it is good. It is good. I have to remember sometimes. So thank you. Thank you so much for reminding me to drink water. <clears throat> All right. Let me go to the other chats. I have some chats here that I have not attended to. Let's start with Rumble in God's hand. Says, God bless you, Gothics. God bless you as well. Nico says, yes, YouTube has become completely tyrannical when it comes to comments. It deletes them from left to right on a massive scale for all sorts of reasons. Totally woke. You know what my favorite thing is on YouTube is when I upload a video, I try not to look at the comments, but sometimes I get a little curious and I look at the comments. And I love um, when people who watch my videos they either hate me or they hate that particular video. And they're so aggressive in the comment section um, that I guess YouTube automatically flags their comments and it doesn't show up. Uh, and then they'll blame me. They'll say, ha, I knew it. You're deleting my comments. And then the next thing you know, there's like five comments from the same person yelling at me for deleting their comments that I didn't actually delete. It's kind of hilarious. <laughs> They're just fighting with themselves, just punching the air. <laughs> uh, over on Kick, uh, one and only Stormy says, uh, the state wants to separate children from their family and sterilize them so they can be replaced with another lower working class. Look at that boom, right? They use so smart. Why do all of these communists and socialists, LGBTQ TikTokers always tell young people to disconnect from their family? Right. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, some of my comments uh, have gotten deleted too. Yeah, like I don't delete comments, guys. Maybe at the beginning, like years ago, I would delete them because like, people yell at me and like, why are you yelling? Shut up. <laughs> I'll just delete their comments. But I don't do that anymore. Now I just respond to them. I, and and just leave it at that um yeah and it's usually something like you want a biscuit congratulations <laughs> they get so mad <laughs> um some channels do delete comments manually though it's impossible to know if youtube or other channels are doing it yeah i don't i don't do it because the way that i look at it it's the algorithm the algorithm 
helps me regardless if you call me a butthole in the comment section or you say that you like my content. You're going to help me either way. Too Casual says, heard Melanie Mac go boom, got banned from Twitch recently. Yes, she did. And I actually have a video coming out about that. But it's not about her specifically. It's about another YouTuber responding to this news and saying the most asinine statements <laughs> uh, to oppose what she said, which what she said wasn't actually bad. But I mean, she's a Christian, so that's pretty much all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm editing that video now. I'm going to try and get it out tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that. Um, let's see. Estevan, hello Estevan, and how are you today? Mm -mm -mm. Most 10 evil people in history in my opinion, Muhammad Dong Zhou Jezebel, the Imperial Japanese Army, Mao Zedong, Hong Zikuan, Pol Pot, King Kim Soon. Don't clip this. <laughs> I'm really bad at pronouncing these names. Where's Satan? Hmm? He should be number one. If he's gonna be first in anything, I feel like it should be this list. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Da, 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 da. Anyone hear about the left going up in arms about Dr. Phil going based with his new book? He's got a new book? What's his book? I know that he seems to be getting red pilled, but I, I'm very skeptical of of uh, him. I'm skeptical of everyone, really. I, I mean, I always question people's intentions, but I'm not sure if he's been red pilled or if he finally was fed up uh, with um, keeping up with the narrative. Because I wholeheartedly believe a lot of celebrities are bought and paid for and they know what they're saying and what they're doing is wrong, but the check is just too good to say no or the threats against their life is too good to you know, the threats against her life is too dangerous, I should say. No one, yeah, that's that sounded weird. So I, I'm not sure which one it is. Um, but yeah, it seems to me that he's uh he's he's ready to speak the truth. He was on Rogan, not pro trans. Mm. What isn't the commies up in arms and sickles about? <laughs> Oh, man. I love them good threats against my life. <laughs> Some people like that. I don't know, man. Uh, let's see. Well, that's interesting. We are in a culture war, so people who take money to spread lies are literally mercenaries. Yes, correct. They are. I think that's a good way of saying that. They're mercenaries. Hmm. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Everyone should want a happy family. Why is that a white feeling and that should be called racist? Because because how do I put this? Misery loves company. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. They're just miserable and they want everyone else to be miserable. What are you doing? You're cooking? Hamburger helper? The adult? Do you think hamburger helper is a predominantly white or black meal? A peasant meal. I like that answer. I think it is a peasant meal. Joe Biden would, would classify that as a black meal. What did he say? What did he say? White kids. What is it? What was the comedy said? Poor kids are just as smart as white kids or something like that. <laughs> That's so stupid. Um, hamburger helper. <laughs> I just saw it as regular food and non-cringing. Mm. 
I love these chats, Gothics. The fact that Gothics might just read whatever we write out loud must have an interesting effect on the chat itself. Do you guys enjoy that? This is, you know, I have to say, this is actually an art form. New streamers, because someone was asking about, you know, getting into making content. If you decide to go the, sh the live streamer route, get into the habit of scanning the chat because when I first started streaming, I would put up whatever on the screen and I would read it. And some of it was not nice and I was just getting trolled and I didn't know that that was a thing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll like I'll mispronounce some things, but my eyes will pick up on nasty, nasty comments and my brain will be like, don't read that out loud. <laughs> Pumpernickel. <clears throat> what about Ooga Booga? Why do you think I'm here? Da, 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 da. I didn't know what hamburger helper was until two months ago. My Midwest friends educated me quickly. That's amazing. Chaco, Chaco says, "Tis time for your reading comprehension." Oh no! Come on. <clears throat> Salutations, damn granny, gran, granny. <laughs> what? Salutations, Dame Granny. The episodic phenomenon of these tributaries are intellectually stimulating. Ah, man. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Gonna get spell check? Gonna get a... Gonna get a... Some help? <laughs> Subtitles? <laughs> definition <laughs> definitely feels like a real community and like i know you can't get more real than randomly <laughs> cocking a nerf gun ah <laughs> oh, i gotta stay strapped man uh chaco says also as an aside do you know a peter file <laughs> a peter file <laughs> Who's Peter? You're talking about in general? Oh, man. Tara says we need a crusade. Hmm. Uh, there was. I already read that. Never mind. So we need a crusade. I don't know what we need right now. Some people just need to know that everything is going to be fine and they need to know that they are loved and that life does not have to be so miserable i think we should stop there but yes i think there needs to be some type of action what it is i don't know <laughs> aside from sharing the gospel <laughs> we need jesus we definitely need jesus yes um Revival is what we need. Guess Granny has never watched the It Crowd. What do you mean, It? Like the horror movie? What are you talking about? The It Crowd? They need to bring back butterscotch pudding. I don't think I've had the pudding butterscotch, but I've had butterscotch flavored other things, and I like it. The Kraken Princess, thank you so much for supporting my Twitch channel. I hope you're doing well today. Um, spell check on aisle one. Y'all are mean. Y'all, y'all are just mean to me. Deadpool Kid says, "Does anyone ever wonder if Medusa's carpet matches her curtains?" <laughs> well, isn't she made of stone? I mean, technically, now she is, yes. So, 
No, no one ever. I, I've never wondered that. But now I know what your mind is. You nasty. <laughs> um, it doesn't have to be miserable. Find a person to be happy with. If they don't have your melanin level, that's okay. Do people actually look for that? I mean, I already answered my question. People do look for that. They look for that, which is weird. Um, let's see. Medusa, she's the press secretary, no? Did you see that they fired a 90-year-old grandma who was working at her job for 60 years because she didn't understand pronouns? Yeah, that's disgusting. I'm not surprised, but... Yeah. Uh... Oh, it's a British sitcom? It's a British sitcom about people who work in IT? Oh, boy. British comedy is interesting. I'll have to check it out. The only British comedy... Guess, guess what British comedy I've watched? I feel like it would be so obvious. I feel like Americans who watch British comedy, there's usually only one or two things that they would watch. What have I seen that is classified as British comedy? I enlighten me. Let me see if you're right. The Office, is there a British version of The Office? Or is The Office British? I didn't know that, if that's true. Okay, so, so I have seen, oh, The Office was originally British. I didn't know that. Interesting. So I have seen, yes, I've seen some Monty Python. What about Mr. Bean? Isn't he British? <laughs> because that would have been my first thing. I've just seen uh, like a lot of his uh, his movies, and I'm like, this is so awkward. But I can't stop watching. <laughs> uh oh, the British one came first for the office. Oh, I'm gonna have to check it out. <laughs> Not the Bean. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to check it out. Hmm. Da, 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 da. I don't think I've seen Hot Fuzz. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, Shaun of the Dead. I guess, all right, so I guess I've seen more British stuff than I actually thought. I've seen Shaun of the Dead. Da, 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 da. You haven't seen the U.S. office? I mean, I like it. Whose Line was originally British as well. I saw that. I did remember seeing a few episodes of that. Uh, I thought, it's so weird how they make, like, different versions. Because they're both speaking English. <laughs> so, I don't understand what the point of that is. Having two different versions of it. Just air the same thing. I don't know. You need to watch Hot Fuzz. Let me look it up. Hot Fuzz. Let me see if I've seen this. Oh, it doesn't. I'm not sure. Let's see. What was it? Hot fuzz. Skilled London police officer. No, I don't think I've seen this. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. That's on my list then. Do you enjoy Tyson James music? I do. I do. I had Tyson on the channel once. We had a nice chat. He's really cool. Um, doo, 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 doo. Different cultures, different jokes and comedy. I suppose so. I suppose that's a fair reason to have a different uh, version of a show. Mm. Um, 
Yeah. So what's what else is going on this week? Anything fun? Anything exciting? Hmm? Anything we should look at? What's going on on the internet? Does my shirt say? We will all be cognitive dissonance. It's a play on cognitive dissonant. Cognitive dissonance. It's my shirt. Uh, my merch is available, by the way. Link in bio. Maybe it's in bio. I don't know. Sometimes my live stream descriptions don't show up. <laughs> but yeah, if you go to my website, gothics.tv, the link to my merch site is there. Um, yeah, man. What America needs is a good intellectual washing out of the mouth. I feel like I'm in a sea of stupid people every time I open up my front door. You are the light of common sense. Oh my goodness, Elijah, thank you so much. That's so kind. To be fair, I'm still a little bit, you know, slow. Uh, but I was a lot slower <laughs> a couple of years ago. So, um, thank you. I appreciate that. Da -da 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 Let's see. Okay, here's something the leftist media is crying about. Trump making racist comments at the Black Conservative Conference. What, 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 were, the, what were the comments? What were the, what were the comments? Trump, racist, conservative. I want to see what these comments are. I'll be the judge. Who, who's talking about this? Trump at the Black Conservative Gala? Okay, okay, let's let let let's take a look. Let's take a look at the so-called racist comments. Okay? Let's put it up on the screen. I found something. This might be it. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay. All right. Let's see. Good. These lights are so bright in my eyes that I can't see too many people out there. But uh, good. these lights are so bright in my eyes that I can't see too many people out there. But uh, I can only see the black ones. I can't see any white ones. You see, that's how far I've come. That's how far I've come. That's a long. That's a long way, isn't it? These eyes. <laughs> uh, we've come a long way together. Lynn Patton. Good. I don't know how that's racist. This person said it's racist who, who tweeted this. How is that racist? He's at a black conservative gala. And if it's mostly black people there, then duh. It's just, <laughs> it's just a logical statement. <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, stupid. Okay. Let let let's see uh let's see this comment. Maybe this one's racist. Let's take a look. Where was the where, where was it? This person just said the crowd at the Black Conservative Federation was mostly white, where Trump made numerous racist comments about black. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, let's see if there's another one. Let's see. Um, mm, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's put this up on the screen. I'm just looking at some clips to see if I can find the racism. It's a little bit difficult, but maybe we'll find it. On top of everything else, Joe Biden really has proven to be a very nasty and vicious racist. He's been a racist. Whether you like it or don't like it, I happen not to like it. Most of the people in this room happen to not like it. And if somebody does like it, they're not supposed to be here. On top of everything else, Joe This is it? This is the racist? What? People are just soft. They're so soft. Ugh. 
that's it y'all are just annoying <laughs> oh man mm. that was it folks <laughs> this may trump races that's crazy you know facts facts are racist there's a song that's called that by the way it's by uh Topher and Bryson Gray facts are racist mm. Good afternoon, Heroism90. My fiance and I love your YouTube channel and the insight you bring to issues. You're awesome. And it's cool to see that you made it onto Twitch. I just finished my lunch break and now I'll be on the lookout for you in the future. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for joining me. I'm glad you enjoy my content. I actually started on Twitch. Fun fact, I started on Twitch. And then somehow I found myself in the desolate place called YouTube. <laughs> um, you're white. Don't you understand how racist you are? Oh, man. It, let's all flash back to where our current house plant president said that if they didn't vote for him, they weren't black. Oops. Correct, Taylor. Correct. <laughs> Mm, man. If my debit card is flagged, can I still make purchases? That is a question for your payment processor. I'm not sure. I, that I don't know. Trump said blacks relate to him because of his legal problem. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> Oh, man. You know, the thing is, is even if he was serious, it's still not a reason to not vote for someone. You can disagree with someone's rhetoric, but objectively, you have to be able to say, OK, who is the better option? Am I picking someone based off of how much they coddle my insecurities and my feelings? Or am I picking someone based on how well he's going to run the country? And I don't know, we've had a little bit of time to see what it looks like to have Biden run the country and or, or not run the country, because some people think that other people are running the country right now. But we, we, we've got a taste of that. I don't think he's doing a good job. Yeah, if I had to rate this at one out of 10, it would be a negative 5,000. Um, yeah, so... I don't think it was a good trade-off. Check his speech. The media is crying about it. Oh, boy. The speech from this conservative convention? Oh, his uh, the legal problem speech? Let me see if I can find it. Trump knows what he's doing. It's a joke first and foremost, and he knows it will enrage the liberals. He's trolling them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so let let's see. Trump uh blacks relate to Trump. Trump ego problems. Let's look that up. Trump tells black voters his legal woes are like racial discrimination. The black people like me due to in death. <laughs> let's look let, let, let's look this up. Oh wait, no, this is an interview. I don't want to hear you guys blab about how much you hate Trump. I just want to see what he says. Damn, this is an hour long. Oh wait, oh, let's let's try this. USA Today. Man, I just don't want to see you guys blab. Just give me the damn speech. Let me go to Twitter. Let's go to Twitter. Mm-mm-mm-mm. 
Let's see this. Um, what does uh, this guy have to say? So looking at Trump, we're looking at somebody. All right, let's see. He just looks so angry, man. Help me understand. What, why would black What's Americans relate to Donald Trump there? I don't understand the connection. <clears throat> well, first of all, let, let's be clear. Donald Trump is using the stereotype of blacks being criminals. And therefore, we would g gravitate towards somebody in a mugshot. Uh, he's in a mugshot for trying to interfere with an election. Blacks were arrested to get the right to vote. That's what the marches were about. Whoa, 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 whoa. How did we get? Now, I'm not, you know, I'm not a historian. And I might not be the most articulate individual on YouTube, but I have a feeling there are other reasons that black people have acquired their own personalized mugshots that fall outside of protesting for the right to vote. I feel like we have just skipped a timeline here. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not understanding. <laughs> It is the epitome of an insult also when you think of the fact that it is a black man that is prosecuting him in Manhattan, Alvin Bragg, a black woman in Georgia, a black woman, the New York State Attorney General, Letitia James. So he's saying that black people would relate to someone indicted for trying to undermine the elections by blacks, but we would go with him rather than them. The, the other part of this that is so amazing is Donald Trump himself has been part of these kinds of uh, unfair prosecutions of blacks. It was he that took out ads in newspapers calling for the death penalty. Oh, my goodness. He's going to go back and talk about that again. Forget it. <laughs> I'm, I'm done with you. <laughs> uh, man. Yeah, no, Al Sharpton, he's definitely a race baiter. Yeah. But the thing is, it is, is Trump is appealing to people. You got to win the audience. And Trump is winning the audience. You know? Um, yeah. But also, I'm a little bit of a skeptic. I'm not going to lie. Um, one of the things that I've said, because we, we talked earlier about how, how you can brainwash a civilization and how COVID, in a sense, united people because people were so desperate to get back to normal that the second uh, they introduced the vaccine or all of these measures to, to uh, flatten the curve, now all of a sudden a lot of people want to unite on this particular topic. And I think... Uh, in an effort to, in order for you to get basically hurt people in a particular direction from a psychological standpoint, you have to make their lives as unbearable as possible. So then they become so desperate to, uh, to reach for that solution that you're providing. Okay. And in a sense, that's happening in the political arena too. So I would like to think that Trump is, we, we can trust him to run the country. I, I would like to think that. But I, uh, part of me is still skeptical because of how bad things have been in America. Naturally, people are like, we got to undo this. Okay? Which, if you're, if you're not using discernment, <laughs> you will fall into the wrong hands because then here's, I'm a savior. Vote for me. You get what I'm saying? So like in the same way, I think I, I, I'm not, this is why I don't tell people to vote for, you know, certain individuals. It's like, no, use your brain <laughs> and pray about it. <laughs> Cause I, I, um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like a lot of, a lot of people in the political, uh, arena are all in on a particular thing. Like this whole globalism agenda i think there's a lot of people in on it that we don't know about i believe it uh there was a super here from kl hi kl 
I never thought I'd be paying reparations, but here I am. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for paying reparations, as you should. Yes, because I am black. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate that. I hope you've been well. Got things for president? Hell no. I don't know if I'd want that. Nope, nope. Don't vote for me. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Vote for Jesus, okay? <laughs> nope, I don't want any of that. Um, nobody's here, question mark. Question mark. People in the black community are sick and tired of being marginalized by illegal immigrants. See, here's the thing, too, is we could say, because I've definitely noticed this, where a lot of people in the black community are, are given the side eye to a lot of the illegals coming in. And so that is motivating them to rethink their voting habits, which is a good thing. But they still haven't addressed the root problem, <laughs> because if black people are still looking at that situation through a racial lens, they're still not resolving the very thing that's going to continue to keep exploiting their vote. Because if I look and I see, okay, a bunch of illegals are coming into the country and our taxpayer dollars are helping fund them, I look at that as you are turning your back on Americans. Now, on the other hand, if you're just seeing it as they're getting priority over black people, now I'm looking at everything through a racial lens. And that's still a bad thing because that means you're still attached to your skin color, which means eventually someone's going to exploit that for votes. So it's still not fixing the problem. I'm so late. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <sighs> Unlimited Power says, God, thanks. What do you think of Amala? Not sure if you know who she is. Yeah, I had a talk with her on her, on her channel a couple of months back. Really, really nice person. I got nothing but nothing but nice things to say about her. Uh, like I said, I only spoke to her that one time, but uh, yeah, she seems cool. Deadpool Kid says, God thinks it's me, the devil. Mm, I don't know about that. I don't think you'd have a phone. <laughs> uh, I noticed you canceled your monthly subscription on how to voodoo. <laughs> anyway, you got my number just in case you call back. No, thank you. I'm not calling you back. I'm not interested. Stop calling me. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> I should be the press secretary. Oh, man, they would. Yo. I think I could do it. I think I could be press secretary. Um, But they would not like me. <laughs> They would not be fond of me. Mm -mm. Not even friend zoned, outright rejected, gone. Mm -mm -mm. David says, check your Discord, look at the short. About Biden, I haven't logged into Discord on my desktop computer yet. <laughs> I haven't. I had to wipe my computer. Huh? Yeah, give me as much as possible. Yeah, load it up. Hem hamburger helper is finished. Yeah, that's right. I don't have any other way to send you the stuff. Let me see if I can. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Let me drop something. Yeah, I have to log in. Can I log in on my phone? No, I don't even have it on my phone. Hold on. Let me. Let me. Let me. See if I can download it on my phone. Hmm. Hamburger. Load it up. <laughs> Joe Biden. I forgot this message. <laughs> I wiped your computer. You mean with a rag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You you right, you right. 
Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I mean. Let me look at uh, my other chats really quick. Rumble, Cheris Beloved says, the best I heard Joe Biden speak in recent times was when Kamala was calling him racist. <laughs> uh, thank you, babe. Woo! Look at all this. Diabetes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I haven't I don't know what to expect. Oh, this is this is piping hot. I'm gonna wait a second. I'm gonna let it breathe for a second. Cause that's a lot. Looks like Asian food. All right. Um, which means you guys are going to get to look at my forehead in a moment because that's what I do when I'm eating on stream. Okay. You got to look at my forehead. Hmm. What the heck? Why can't I open it on my phone? What's going on? It's right here. Installing. Okay. Forehead incoming. Yeah, yeah. Let's see how zoomed in we can get. Okay. Mukbang? There will be no such thing. Or we can just like, wait, where are we going? Where are we going? Hold on. Whoa, 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 buddy. Whoa. Let's go. Hold now. What do we got over here? You see that $100 bill? That's fake. That's from pop culture crisis. That's not real. And what do we got upstairs? Let's see. Let's take a, let's take a tour. We got Wakanda forever. <laughs> um, let's go down here. Okay. Let's come back to my forehead. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's a three hundred dollar bill. Here we go. Here we go. Mm. Mm. We also. What else can I show you? We also have this on this side. Let's go this side. It's a whiteboard. Let's go up here. Oh shit. <laughs> you can't see that. I was going to show you my poster. I was on a reality show back in the day. On a gay reality show. I told you guys, I, w I was an ally. People think, like, uh, you know, I just hate the gays. And it's like, nah, dude, I was, I was all up in that. All right, back to forehead. Okay. Allow me a moment to try this. <clears throat> It's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. You know. Not bad. All right, let me see if I can log in on my computer now. Discord. It's not bad. It's not bad. Aren't all reality shows debatably gay? <laughs> You know, you might have a point. You you actually might have a point, my friend. Your 18 head looks remarkably smooth. I'm jealous. Hmm. Well. <laughs> hmm. Um. Let me see here. Why can't this log in? Yep, 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 yep. Come on, log in. Come on. I have worked hard for this forehead. Okay, you're not doing what I want you to do. If I go over here and I, uh, devices, no, not devices, scan QR code. Let's try that. Yep, 
login. All right, we're making progress. Hmm. Hmm. Pretty good. You're still waiting for a direct link to my goth intro. What you mean? Let's see what knowledge has to say. Because knowledge be dropping some knowledge. This is what happens when you vote for your vote with your skin tone. Let's open this up. Hold on a second. All right, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Screen. I understand. Okay, okay, okay. Let's. Oh, there's my forehead. Whoa, why is she so angry? Let's do this. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, this is what the f happens when you vote for skin tone. The only reason why slow ass Joe that got his ass as president is because of that glitch bitch Kamala. Everybody was so desperate to put a black woman, and now the whole country f the f up. How the hell you bring in all these illegals and don't know where the f to put them? And now y'all gonna take all them cheering out of school. Why the f did y'all choose Chicago? So now most of them children are black children got to sit at home because y'all don't... Man, y'all getting on my motherfucking nerves. Fix this shit. Now, my motherfucking... Whose auntie is this? I love her. This is what the f happens. Yeah, when um... Ash World War II. Um... This is what... Yeah. You feel her rage? But the thing is, people still... I gotta turn this off. People still haven't figured out how to put two and two together. And I know a lot of people, even in my family, are ready to vote for Biden again. And it's like, man, I love you guys, but you gotta, you gotta just take yourself out of the equation and just look at it objectively. She's not wrong at all. She's not wrong. Two or two is five, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're going to get... They're going to... It's... Yeah. She's not wrong. I want it. I walked back to my screen and got forehead. But that's good. That's good. That's all I have to offer you guys today is forehead and hamburger helper. This is what... It it's literally noodles and cheese and hamburger. <laughs> it's the most unhealthy thing. Maybe not the unhealthy, but it's uh, it's up there. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh man. Um she has the energy of becoming a viable vice presidential candidate. It would keep the president on his toes about letting her <laughs> do anything. Mm. Did you check to see if it has the bugs in it? It probably does. More than likely. I'm eating the bugs and I just don't even know. It's possible. Hmm. What else is going on? All right. Now, I, now you guys are watching me again. I feel awkward. I just want to eat, man. I just want to eat. I want you to look at my forehead. Right there. Boom. Look at my baby hairs. Hmm. Wait, what? Oh, I got super chats. All right, let me look up the super chats in a second. Hold on, let me see. Super chats. I have missed the super chat. I am terrible. From Deadpool Kid. Gothics eats Belzy Boss. You know, the bug guy. Anyway, we heard you were at church yesterday and just wanted to know you were there to protest, right? <laughs> right? This could be a new version of the screw tape letters. Who knows? You might be onto something. Mm. Real women vote for Trump. I, hey, 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 hey. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Like I said, 
the whole concept of right versus left, Republican versus Democrat, there's a lot of people that are calling themselves conservative who are identifying as trans. So I, I don't know about that statement. They're, they're voting for Trump. That's a man. Uh, may we touch your hair? Yes, you may. And I promise not to call you racist for it. Thank you for asking first. <clears throat> I don't have a problem so much with the idea of protein found in insects. Neither do I. Um, I know that's a thing in some cultures. I just don't like it being shoved by the elites who enjoy caviar too much. Yeah, it's really just... It's them saying, this is good for you. We're not going to participate in this, but we want you to. And if something was actually good, you know, just like the COVID vaccine for us for uh, a moment, if, if it was actually good for you, people would be jumping on board to get it. And we know a lot of people didn't get it. They say that they did. They didn't get it. If it's good for you, then you do it. If wearing a mask is good for you, then you wear a mask. If you should stay home, then you should stay home too. Mm -mm -mm -mm. McGrady, thank you for the thumbs up sticker. Thank you so much. Did you hear about the teen death that the media is lying about while Libs of TikTok has the footage that tells a different story of the media is trying to paint a different narrative? So, yeah, I heard something of some kid dying. I don't know what the cause of death was. But they're saying that the libs of TikTok is responsible. And that's very reminiscent of saying that Trump was responsible for January 6th. It's like, do people lack self-control? But I mean, of course, we know we know the answer to this because most people on the left believe that self-control is a foreign concept. So, yeah, I can understand why they're saying that. I have a gray hair. I have a few gray hairs. Quite a few. Mm -mm. I've never played Roblox, so I don't know what I'm missing. Um... Your truth is always wrong anyway. Not really about it being a foreign concept, but rather the whole shiz with your truth versus my truth. Where, yeah, it's really, it's all subjective. It's like, it's crazy that people don't see the problem with that. Hmm. What I do? What I do? Mm -mm -mm. Trump is not solely responsible for January 6th. Um, if Trump knowingly provokes those people, he can be guilty of a crime. Also, hello. Also, hello. Do you think he knowingly provoked people? Think so? Have you guys heard about all the persecution happening with the January 6th people? It's, I, you know, it's crazy. It's after January 6th happened. I got sick of hearing about it. And I think that was the, the whole intention of the media to keep talking about January 6th day in and day out to get people so fed up with it to the point that said, I'm sick of hearing about January 6th. And then I went to the first walkaway convention 
and they had a few of the people there who were arrested at January 6th. And hearing their stories, it makes me sick to my stomach. I actually feel guilty about ever saying I hope to never hear about this event again for the rest of my life. A lot of them have gone bankrupt because of all the legal fees they have to um, they're responsible for because they're being persecuted for no reason. This one guy that was there, he said that he had a SWAT team come into his house while his toddlers were there. SWAT team comes into his house for no reason. He wasn't being violent or anything like that. One person wasn't even in the building. It's 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 wild how they're trying to cover it up and paint these people like they're uh, domestic terrorists. It's really disgusting. Same, especially when the media kept comparing January 6th to 9-11. Yeah, they just need uh, political uh, scapegoats. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm -mm -mm. Insofar, I don't know that he provoked them, but... Details are always kept locked up until trial. We won't know until there is a trial. Some evidence will never be known until then. Yeah, I mean, some evidence will never be known until then. But I think ob objectively, you can at least look at the situation and be like, there's something off about this. The second they compare January 6th to 9-11, you have to wonder, what is their angle? <laughs> Why would you say such a thing? Hmm. How do you like it, babe? It's all, right. it's all right. I'm already sick of it. I'm gonna box the rest of this up. But thank you. I'm surprised Gothics is not drinking Monster Energy drink while eating her hamburger helper. I used to love Monster Energy. Mm. The government and police are terrorists. Now, is that objective? Like, not objective. Is that an absolute statement? No judgment. Do you guys think it's an absolute statement to say government and police are terrorists or they're the bad guys? Like, does it matter who it is? They're the bad guys. Yeah, yeah I'm already over that. <laughs> I'm already sick of it. Thank you, babe. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm grateful, but I don't see the hype. <laughs> it was interesting, but now I'm like over it. Mm. Mm. Yes, they know exactly what they are doing. They have created a climate of fear. And are intimidating people to throw the line. But what I mean is, have has the government and police officers always been bad? You know, like, when I say absolute statement, are you saying that there are no good police officers? Are you saying that there are no good people in politics? Because if the answer is no, then there's no reason for us to vote. We just might as well just surrender. Because whoever gets in office, they're, they're just going to be terrorists. You know? I know cops, not all cops. I know some current officers and my father-in-law was a sergeant detective. Cops are not terrorists. Dirty ones exist and they got to go. Yeah. I asked because there, there definitely is this um, belief that all cops are bad and all government is bad. And if we're going to use this argument, we have to be willing to at least say this about any other type of profession. There are bad people everywhere. Um, and it's not specific to a certain uh, field. 
Like you can disagree with the idea that we have to live under a government. I don't see what the alternative is. <laughs> you know, government is never going to disappear. It's just not possible. Um, because you would be expecting sin to disappear, which is not possible. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to say that all cops are bad and all government is bad. I believe there are good people out there. Um, but I think the, the problem is, is that, uh, I, I almost wonder if people believe that there are no good individuals in these fields because they recognize that human beings suck, you know? And it's like, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, but what about you? Don't you, don't you think that you suck in some way? Not you specifically, whoever said that in the chat, but I agree with the concept of the government, but their uh, tentacles are in every possible place, including those where they have no business being. Yeah, like I think that the solution is never going to be no government, but the closest thing to that is small government. You're always going to have someone dipping their hands in places that they shouldn't be. Um, but eventually, even if like, and this is why I look at these, these, um, anarchists that are like no government bleh. and i'm like so you mean to tell me that you think if we were to abolish the government there isn't going to be a government that takes its place this we're dealing with human nature and i think human beings have a tendency to fight for power eventually you would get another government Like the end racism argument, right. It can't be ended until Jesus comes back, right. So that's why people lose their minds when I say racism is an illusion. They're like, wah! It's like, okay, whether it is or it isn't there, what are you going to do about it? You have to accept it. You can oppose it, but how are you opposing it? And what are you even defining as racism? Because math is racist now. So it's like you have to pick your battles and some people just expect to have a perfect experience in life. And it's like that. Stop being so entitled to how you think your life should be. It's not even about fighting for power. It's about a need for hierarchy. I mean, I think it's both, though, because there are people fighting for power like there's always going to be, we have to remember that one of the sins that I think runs rampant in society that I think leads to a, a lot of problems, uh, two actually, pride and envy. And if you think other people are getting treated better, or you think that you know more than anyone else, then I think naturally there's going to be that strive to seek power. It's like, I know better than everyone else. And then, yeah, you also have the other people, the, ne the need for hierarchy, where people will look towards someone else to solve their problems. The government is not God. And that's what I'm getting at is some people treat the government like God. If racism is an illusion, there is no anti-white bias in the media. If racism is an illusion, there is no anti-white bias in the media. No, there is anti-white bias in the media. And there is racism, but racism is also an illusion. And so is anti-white bias. What do I mean by that? By that? These things are not going to go away. <laughs> so how do you deal with it? You can complain about it. or you can find the solution to eradicate all of these things. And, but what is the underlying symptom of these things? It's sin. It's hate. Now, you, my friend, Joe, it's very interesting, though, because you said that you don't believe in, like, in God. I believe you said you don't. I'm not sure what you said about morality. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you say that you think morality is subjective or there's not an objective moral standard? So the notion of racism bad, anti-white bad, it's self-defeating anyway. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think you're the one that's... I speak to a lot of non-Christians on this channel, and I, I forget sometimes who I talk to. I forgot what news me media was, but they scoff at the idea of our rights not being given by the government, but God, 
It's part of a, oh yeah, that might be a video. I might do that as a video. That's a good topic. That's really good. Ima imagine that though, if you believe that, that humans don't have rights given by God, that your rights only come from the government. If your rights only come from the government, then that means that your rights can always be taken away. Like human rights. And that, that's a scary way to live. Mm. I said we do not need to know God in order to understand morality. Morality is in purest form is about preventing harm onto others, but that's that's already that's already presupposing that there is a moral standard. So that in itself, where did you get that from? Like this idea that we need to pr prevent harm onto others says who? Says who? Uh, I love you, Gothics. In a normal fan, not a parasocial way. <laughs> love you. In a, you know, uh, a loving, uh, platonic, uh, a non-creepy way. <laughs> Socialism is not an economic system. Socialism is the worship of the spirit of envy. Mmm. I agree with you. That's powerful. I agree with you. I think gluttony is also a big thing. Wanting to live in excess in general is inherently awful, whether it's for food, power, wealth, or even followers and popularity. Oh, yeah. I have a thing to discuss today. How does the Holy Spirit feel and does it feel like you're being talked to when reading the Bible? Wisdom downloads. How does the Holy Spirit feel and does it feel like you're being talked to when reading the Bible? For me, no. I'm still uh, learning because here's my problem is sometimes I'm like, is this my thought or is this the Holy Spirit talking? <laughs> so I'm still trying to uh, fine tune that. And I think a big problem is if I, if I, is if I download too much information from the outside world, it gets harder to hear God. It gets harder to hear the Holy spirit. Um, so I don't know, maybe that's a different, uh, a different people have different answers in here, but yeah, for me, I don't, I don't even know. Sometimes thoughts do come up in my head. Like the other day, for example, I had my alarm set for a specific time. And right before my alarm went off, I heard someone in my head say, wake up. Yo, creep. It was like, what is that? <laughs> and I woke up. And then like a minute later, my alarm goes off. <laughs> like it's stuff like that where it's like, whoa, what is going on? But when I'm reading the Bible, no, I don't. I don't get that. Deep thoughts with Gwanny. Uh, excuse me. You only re-read part of my comment about morality. We do not need to know God to know what harm is. Even cold-blooded criminals will not tolerate violence unto themselves. Was that your whole comment? I don't want to misconstrue what you're saying. Rights in the United States do not come from the government. This is combined conservative and liberal propaganda. Rights, if the people belong to us at birth, huge lie from both sides rights the people belong to us at birth but what rights though like i hear what you're saying here um we do not need to go no gods know what harm is even cold-blooded criminals will not tolerate but but why is the idea even because you're you're using a um a, a subjective perspective like if I ask a criminal, hey, do you like it if someone causes harm to you? And they say no, that doesn't mean that that is objectively true. So but even if a million people in the world agree that hurting other people is wrong, why does that make that law? 
Like, why does that make that actually an objective moral standard? Are we saying th are we saying that we need to have a certain percentage of people agree that one moral standard is the moral standard? So if 90% of people all of a sudden said, you know what, killing people is totally fine. And if you kill me, that's fine. Would that make it okay? And if not, why? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Um, I had a super chat from McGrady. McGrady, thank you so much for the super. That's not a presupposition. Social animals tend to evolve to reduce unnecessary harm for the propagation and survival of the species. But why is survival of the species good? Are we saying that moral standards come from evolution? But how can that be so? How can evolution be the source of our moral compass? If we are all the result of random molecules and atoms in a clump of cells, then how can we even say that we are designed to live in a particular way and adhere to certain moral standards? Because if it's just, I'm a clump of cells and you're a clump of, clump of cells that all came from evolution, then who's to say that I'm right or you're wrong? Who cares about survival? I don't think survival is necessary. So in other words, it's me against you, my worldview against your worldview. So who gets to decide which one is right? I didn't say anything about universal standards here. I just said we don't need God to know what harm is. So if someone slaps you and they say, I don't, I don't know God, and they slaps you, they to them, they think that that's fine. So why is why is it wrong? It might hurt you physically, but to them, they're okay with it. So why is it wrong? Deadpool. Deadpool Kid says, Gothics, it's Margaret. Oh, boy. Angry Lesbian Witch Club. <laughs> yes, we've noticed that you haven't renewed your monthly subscription. Deadpool Kid, what is going on? Are, are we cosplaying? Are we? What, what are we doing? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> also, we heard a nasty rumor that you're married to a man. <laughs> oh, man. I have no obligation to tolerate harm, simple, but you're my friend. <laughs> harm according to whom? I think that's the problem is we're, 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 we're sort of like arguing in a circle. You know, like, do I need to get the whiteboard? Should I? Get, I'm already at two hours streaming. Do I need to pull out the whiteboard? I'm not eating the rest of this. I don't want it. Do you guys want my hamburger helper? I don't want it. My husband made it for me, but I don't want it. I don't want it. Ah. Um. Let's see. Joseph is the destiny of the chat. Oh my goodness. I I think that's mean. That's mean. <laughs> uh, I won't go that far. <laughs> um there are no atheists in hell. Sadly, they lean to they learn too late God is real. Homeschool us granny gothics. Gothic, see if Parmesan cheese. See if Parmesan cheese on your dish. Going back to the Holy Spirit, can it literally speak to you? 
Sure, if God wanted it to, I think it guides you and guards your ability to think scripture. Scripture is God talking to you, New Age believers. New Age believes in demons or spirit guides. Years down the road, when abortion is seen as human rights violation, that it is, people will say Christians were the cause of it since people try to make biblical justifications for abortion. Abortion is seen as a human rights violation. People will say that Christians were the cause of it since people tried to make biblical justifications for abortion. In the sense that there are Christians that will say abortions are fine, if I'm understanding that correctly. Accepting God exists would require giving up control. Yo, there was a recent uh, lecture, not a lecture, it was like an interview with Jordan Peterson talking to some Catholic church leaders. And you could just see Peterson just thinking about like this whole idea of Christ and and him being Lord. And it was just so interesting. And he kept like correcting himself as he's doing his, uh, he's thinking out loud. I think he's there, man. He's almost, I think his brain is just getting in the way. <laughs> like he's overcomplicating something. And the thing, and the thing that he said in, in his talk is like, not everyone knows everything. And that, that is just the reality. Like, for example, the big bang or what we think is the big bang. People don't know what came before that. So the idea of we don't know everything about God and therefore God isn't real is uh, it's it's stupid <laughs> to even say that. So, OK, let me get let me get my whiteboard. We're going to have some fun. All right. We're going to have some fun. Let's move this up. I need to fix this because I have a. All right. Let's put this here. OK. All right, hold on a second. I am just going to adjust some things and then I'm going to get my whiteboard and we're going to have some fun. Okay. We're going to have some fun. I feel like I've done this whiteboard before, but let's do it again. Okay. And to make it easier, I actually, I bought these fun things here. Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me all right? Let's move this up a little bit. And uh, so you can see my face. Hello? Yes, yes, dear. Perfect, yes! Your eardrums, am I really loud? Am I super loud? I'm gonna lower this. Because I, th I think you guys are joshing me. No, I can't hear you. You guys are lying to me. Okay, I'm good? All right, cool. I'm gonna move this over. <laughs> are you playing hangman? Yo, we should play Hangman. I would love to. All right, hold on. Okay. Okay, hold on. Um, 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 um. We're gonna we're gonna be serious, but first we gotta. You sound a little canny. Hold on. Okay, first we gotta do this because we're goofy here. Um, hold on. 
uh, uh, Okay, hangman. Hangman, go. <laughs> go. Go. Someone said, Oh my goodness, this is hard. Okay. Okay. Um What mouse? <laughs> Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Confusion for three hundred dollars. Um. Hey. <laughs> that was actually easy. Wait. Yeah. I can't spell. That was actually pretty easy. I mean, I forgot because we have like so many people in the chat. So it's kind of, it's kind of quick. All right. So now that we did that, you guys are great. All right. Hold on. Let me get a little paper here and then we'll do it for real now. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, this should be a discord chat. But then I'm over here trying to like spell it out. Like, wait a minute, am I spelling this right? <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, so here we go. The question was, um, all right, let me read the super chats really quickly actually before I get into this. So 02122 says, why are you using a whiteboard instead of a blackboard during Black History Month? Are you a white supremacist? I am, I actually am. Deadpool kid said something about flying spaghetti monster. What is what is Deadpool kid saying? Flying spaghetti monster. I haven't heard you in a couple of months, years. Hello. I thought we were doing so well. <laughs> no. Okay, so this is what uh, the Joseph Santos was saying. So Joseph Santos, if I remember correctly. It's been a, a little bit since I've saw the original chat, but Joe was saying that uh, human harm is bad. Okay, so so let's just break it down easy. All right, so Joe, this is Joe, this is Joe, and Joe says hitting people is bad. Don't hit. All right, and everyone would agree, even bad people agree that hitting people is bad, okay? So um, harm is bad. So then the question is, says who? Because I know for a fact so, that some people don't care about that and they will harm knowing that they're gonna get harmed and it's just the way that it is. I mean, we literally just talked about someone who lit themselves in fire in protest of, of uh, freeing Palestine. So, uh, yeah. So now it's like, okay, says who? Harm is bad. Says who? Joe would say society. Society. And society would either agree, disagree, 
or it depends. <laughs> depends. Let's just say that. I, I know that looks bad. All right, it would say depends. All right. So basically, what we have so far is the the presupposition here was that uh, harm is bad. So you're importing a moral standard from somewhere. And I say, says who? Now we have three potential sources. So when you say society says that hurting someone is bad, who in society are we talking about here? Is this based on the percentage of people that agree? Is this based on their position in authority? Because from here, some people would say, no. It says who? Uh, they would agree it's bad because of the law or because of doctors or maybe, um, I don't know, scientists. So now we have an extra layer of potential sources of where that morality comes from. Now, what happens if the law changes? Oh, well, now all of a sudden, harm is okay. Harm is okay because the law, you, you're, you're basing it off of the law and the law says it's okay. What happens if doctors say the law is okay? Or if scientists say the law is okay? Does that mean that it's okay? And if you say no, says who? And we run into this problem <laughs> of going into a circle. I guess I should have done this again. <laughs> we run into a circle. <laughs> says who? It's a, it's a logic loop. Um, let's see. Joe, Joe, thank you so much for being a member for 32 months. I have never in my three years here said that society or democracy is an argument for what determines harm. I didn't say it now either. That's good. I'm using this as an example. And an example, you said this, harm is bad. And my question was, says who? Regardless, my point is, regardless of what your answer is, you're going to end up in a logic loop. It's unavoidable. And I'll show you right now. So says who? Harm is bad, says who? I'll show you. Uh, all right, let's see what else we got over here. Do, 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 do. I am not in a position to save myself. I am a bad candidate for my own savior. I've tried and failed. I would rather choose God and hope, challenge, and identify that is brought in my faith. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. Law predate, laws predate God. What do you mean by that? Uh... Morality is relative, though. What is right and wrong to us is not the same as right and wrong to a pedophile, a thief, or someone who is in another country and believes differently. So, so we could say that morality is subjective because, as you just mentioned, if we go around the world, there are people who have different moral standards. But that's not really the argument, right? Because at the, if, if you were to just... Uh, remove the borders of the world and just say we're all living on a plot of land and there there, there weren't particular uh, geographical areas that separated us, it would still be this person's morality against that person's morality. So who is actually right? Uh, do, 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 do. God is a human construct created to control people and explain the unknown. Interesting. So God is a human construct known to control people. I'm having fun with this. Okay. So people, you're, you're saying that people created God to control others. Okay, so. So you're saying that laws came before God. All right, so give me, give me something, some type of law that you think uh, it is something that everyone should know. Because if you're saying that laws were created before God, then you must have 
some idea of where an objective moral standard comes from? Or do you not believe that there's an objective moral standard? Do you believe that morality is subjective? I have no doubt that there is more going on in, on in or out of the universe than we'll ever be aware of. But the idea of us being at the top and God's special people is nothing short of, but the idea of us being at the top and God's special people of nothing sort of, we're not at the top. Who said that? Who told you that? I'm not following. The only person, here, here's something else to, to think about too. All right, because you mentioned the top and this just rang a bell to me, okay? You guys remember the food pyramid? I remember the food pyramid, yeah. Okay, so here's the pyramid, all right? Or maybe it's the Illuminati symbol, who knows, okay? All right. Um, so if we're at the bottom, let's say society. The common folk is at the bottom. And let's say above here, um, Let's say this is a short pyramid, teachers. And then let's say above teachers, we have science. And then above science, we have government. Or you can change these. Maybe it's flipped. And maybe somewhere here we have media. This is just a summary. A lot of people think that, like I said, a lot of people think that their morality comes from government or science or because the news said it, it must be true. So you're working with the pyramid. So for people that think, well, the law says that this is wrong, so therefore the law is correct. Again, I don't think the government is ever going to go away. There's always going to be some form of government. And some of the things that the government uh, has created laws against are good things. They're, they're moral things, but they're also legislating a lot of immoral things. So in the case of immorality being legislated, what do you do? Now, if you're saying that your ultimate source of morality is the government, my friends, we need a history book <laughs> because there are lots of bad things that the government has legislated. So what, what do you do now? Now, this is why um, spoiler alert, this is why Christians are, uh, like public enemy number one. If you really objectively, uh, look at the political discourse, there's a lot of people that have this fear of Christian nationalism and they're going to create a theocracy and they're trying to impose their morality. This is why, because, uh, evil is opposed to God. And if your government is evil, your government is going to be opposed to God. And so if you're trying to control a population of people, this is what communists do, and you know that the majority of your population believe that God sits up at the top, that's not good because the government wants to sit up at the top. So what do you do? <laughs> How do you fix that? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So inevitably, even if you don't believe in God, you're still working off of this little pyramid. But just because you're, you call yourself a teacher or you're in the news or you're a scientist or you're part of the government, that doesn't mean that you're right. Are we saying that there's never liars, there's never killers, there's never, you know, are we saying that there are never bad people in these areas? What do we mean by, what do we mean by bad? Like we, we, we end up in this predicament, this logical uh, circular reasoning again. All right, so Joe, where's Joe? God thinks you should check out Doug Wilson. I know Doug Wilson. Well, I don't know him. So uh, fun fact, um, Graham, uh, Graham Wilson is the director of my documentary that's streaming now on Lord.tv, by the way. Go check it out. Use code gothics to get a seven-day free trial. Uh, Graham is the director of my documentary, and his uncle is, um, is uh, Doug Wilson. Never met him, though. Um, seen some of his stuff. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Please don't bring up the food pyramid. <laughs> Just a nutty bar at some Oreos and I'm convicted. Oh, man. That's funny. 
All right, let me see if I can catch up in the chat. Where is Joe? Bring me Joe. <laughs> Where is he? I want to speak to Joe. The Bible is treated like law. So just because it is written does not mean that it's true. Just because the Bible is written doesn't mean. Okay, so forget about the Bible for a second. Forget about the Bible. Okay. You still run into this problem. Even if if you weren't able to criticize anything about religion or, or Christianity, you still have to deal with this problem. The fact that if you're saying something is wrong and I ask you says who, and you say because of this, 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 and this, you inevitably end up in circular reasoning. You still have to account for that. So I think it's more productive to account for that. And then we can talk about the Bible later. <laughs> Uh, dang, how they sounding like Bane. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> um, McGrady, have you tried reading studies on evolution of morality? Why do whales, bonobo, what the hell's a bonobo, and other smart animals tend to not harm social groups? I've never read anything about that, but Let's, let's think about that. That's a good point. That's actually a really good point. Um, so why do whales, bonobo, bonobos, and other smart animals tend to not harm social groups? Now, we can say that it's evolution, but I think that that is, I think that that is trying to simplify something without actually saying what it is. Because if we're saying that, okay, because of evolution, well, that to me implies that there's some type of code. There's some type of program in the same way that our body is made up with millions and millions and billions of genetic code. The same can be said about how animals treat themselves in the, in the wild and while, and why some marine animals have, what do you call it? It's not, not sonar, but they have something that is uh, comparable to sonar where, where they can communicate in the water for miles apart? Like, how can they do that? Why? Is it just because uh, the universe randomly farted and all of these animals now have this ability? Or is it because the way that they had this ability was intentional and there was a design behind it? You know, like if I went to the library right now and I picked up a book and I started reading it, uh, I'm not gonna say that the writer doesn't exist. The words are there. It's on a paper. Obviously, there must be a writer. Well, now it might even be AI, but in any case, someone had to program the AI is what I'm saying. So why would I then look at all of the fine tuning of the universe and all of these specific designs that uh, uh, all, all these patterns in the universe and say that there's no God? I don't say that about a book. I'm confusion. <laughs> Bonaboos are species of chimps man we just call them monkeys man god gave us a fingerprint uh sonar is what you're looking for i think it's sonar there is a god because it takes intelligence to create so many amazing creatures um let's see do, 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 um let me scroll down. I R baboon. Was that a meme? Let me see. Gothics empathy is explained by evolution. If everyone started to kill everyone and we'll all totally be selfish and no one would, would survive. So empathy is explained by evolution. So if we're going by that logic, are you saying that there are no wars happening right now in the world? Are you saying that gang violence has been resolved because of evolution? Are you saying that, you know, violence in general is just gone? Because if evolution is the source of us uh, being moral creatures, and we're saying that because of evolution, we learned empathy, then I would think based on evolution, all of the uh, undesirable moral characteristics would be gone by now. 
How come they're not? I don't know. Just a question for you guys. I don't know. Can other people's means be your logic or thinking just because you read their novels? Can other people's means be your logic or thinking just because you read their novels? I'm not sure if I'm understanding that one. Uh, let's see. One of the, how do I say this word? Myrids, my marides, marids. I'm retarded. <laughs> Why people hate Christianity is because it attacks the ego and demands accountability. Yeah, yeah. I've said this before. I don't think anyone is an atheist. I don't think. I think we are designed to worship, and we are designed to know God. And people, some people, a lot of people, most people <laughs> choose not to worship God. They instead worship something else. And usually it's themselves. So Christianity is in direct opposition to the God of self because Christianity, Jesus says, this is how you should live. And the God of self says, mm, actually, I like living this way. <laughs> so thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> and so uh, no one likes to be criticized and told that the way that they're living is going to lead to death. They don't, they don't like that. I get it. I was like that. I understand. Um, but yeah, I, I don't believe in atheism. Um, wrong. Wrong, says Joe. Christianity demands accountability to Christians specifically without meeting the burden of proof necessary. Huge misconception. Christianity demands accountability to Christians specifically with... No, that's incorrect. Where, who told you that? Christianity demands... So Christianity, if you're a Christian, you're supposed to follow Christ. You're supposed to be a, a Christ follower. But I think you're, you might be meshing two things together because uh, everyone is going to either be with the father when they die or they're not going to be with the father when they die. So uh, because God loves us, he's not going to force us to do whatever so we can make our decision. Um, so I think, I don't know, that the way that you're phrasing that, I don't, I'm not quite following. But yeah, as a Christian, we should, you know, we, it's not even that we should follow a rule if we're Christians, it's that we want to and we're, uh, we're happy to because we love God so much. Um, I can't speak for everyone else, but I do. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Being a Christian, you have to die to self. Um, I'm not sure if I'm, I feel like I'm not understanding. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let me see, let me scroll up here. Joy Wright says, tough question and pill to swallow. Crickets from the agnostic peanut galleries. I don't know, man. How do you say this? Muriad, Muriad, Murid, Murid, Murid. What the hell? <laughs> Mar Marriott, forget it. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> it's a stupid word anyway. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Murray, hold on. Muriad, Murray, Muriad, Muriad, Muriad. A Muriad of problems. Have you seen the Muriad of problems? So you guys are messing me up. How many E's? Muriad, Muriad, Muriad. <laughs> Muriad. <laughs> Mur. <laughs> oh, man. It's Mir? Myriad? Is it Myriad? 
myriad. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Woo! First try. It's easy. It's easy. You guys. Ow. <laughs> You guys, you guys, man, you underestimate my power, okay? Myriad. Look at that. I said it again. Woo! I said it again. <laughs> Myriad. Anyway, I'll forget it tomorrow. <laughs> and we'll do it again. Oh, man. This has been such a good talk. I enjoy the whiteboard. I am grateful to see, well, maybe, who knows? Maybe I scared some people away and they're going to go subtweet about me. That's okay. We will pray for them. I like having these discussions. They are fun for me. It's like problem solving, you know? It's like, how do you, I'm very competitive, I think. You know, I don't like debating, but I like trying to get someone to get to the finish line. That's, I don't know, it's, it's enjoyable to me. The word is racist and bigoted. Oh, stop. Stop it. Ego Chip says, I have studied the Bible. You know nothing of my life experiences. I reject religion because I know it intimately and it's a fundamentally evil and rotten system. I have rejected religion because it's intimately and... So I have a, I have a question for you, Ego Chip. When you say you reject religion, are you saying you reject all religion or are you saying you reject God of the Bible? And then my next question is, you said that you know the Bible, but do you know God? Because one of the things that I oppose a lot on this channel is that uh, when people say, I'm not, I, I used to be a Christian. Then I ask them what they mean by that. And they tell me, I know I've memorized the Bible. I've gone to church. I know the Bible from front to back off the top of my head. I got baptized. Okay. But do you know God? Do you have, did you have a relationship with Jesus? I think there's a difference between memorizing scripture and having an intimate relationship with Jesus, because it's one of those things where it's like, I, um, you, I think when you get to that point and you have that relationship, it's, I find it very unlikely that someone would back away. Like once you know the love of God, it's so like, it's just so amazing, man. <laughs> so I, so I asked like, what do you mean by that? That you know the Bible? Do you know God? I had a super that just came in. Oh my goodness, Rosario. Whoa. Rosario, thank you. Oh my goodness. Thank you for the 199 super. Atheists tend to have a sunny view of human nature because they were born and raised in societies that were founded upon Judo Christian values. They become complacent and don't have a reference point, like living in a communist and how do you say this? Is there there see there a they say we don't need God or morals. But you're right about this, Rosario. One thing that I I um, notice is that when a, when people who who don't know God uh, or they call themselves atheists, they'll they'll say, OK, I don't need to know God in order to be a moral person. And some of the things that they'll say, right, they'll say, OK, uh, murder, murder is bad. They'll say uh, physical assault is bad. They'll say human trafficking is bad. And hey, I don't know God. And I agree that those things are bad. See, I told you, I don't need to know God in order to be a good person. Now, someone mentioned that they know the Bible and the Bible says that the law is written on our hearts. So there's a reason why the majority of people in the world can agree that certain things are morally right and morally wrong. Like we can feel it in our core. Some people try to ignore it and suppress it because it's inconvenient and they want to live in sin. But I think for the most part, people can sense that something is actually wrong. Now, what's interesting about that is if you were to just um, take away the notion of the law being written on our hearts for a second and just say, OK, as an atheist, I know things are bad. Um, a lot of atheists are following 
Christian morality. Uh, C.S. Lewis said, what was, it, what was this quote? He said, every historical statement in the world is, uh, is based on someone's authority or, or something like that. And he's right. So if we're going to say that I know murdering is bad because that's how I was raised and that's how society operates. And if you totally remove God from the equation, you have to keep going back and eventually you hit a brick wall. So if we're saying that everyone since the beginning of time has always agreed on this particular thing, but why does that make that particular thing right or wrong? Where does that come from? And all that to say, I think a lot of people don't even realize they're following Christian morality while also shitting on the morality <laughs> that they're using. <laughs> like it has to come from a source. And if it's just another person, that's not really a source of morality because people are fickle and people like to change their, uh, you know, change their behavior like they do their underwear, which is hopefully all the time. If you have dirty underwear, I don't know, you should probably get that checked out, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, Rosario, thank you so much again for that for that super. That was really nice, really nice of you. Um, do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Being around Christians is exactly like being around the woke. They are stuck in their ideological circular logic. There are a few of them who can think outside the box, but they end up leaving. Interesting. Interesting. Well, see, this is what I always say to people, is that um, Christians are not good representatives of who God is. I mean, that would be ideal for every single Christian to be reflection of who God is. But... I know firsthand that that's not the reality. Uh, I've met a lot of Christians. Even now, I'll be like, I'll make videos and I'll always get some comments from really combative Christians. And I'm like, bro, I'm like, chill, what's going on? <laughs> like, what's happening here? Um, so, again, I don't know if you answered it. Do you, do you know who God is? Like, are you basing your conclusion? of Christianity on how you perceive Christians? Or are you basing your perception of Christianity on who God is? Because you're gonna get a totally different outcome. All religion and the God contained within it. That God is not the God if one exists. That God is as clear to anyone with a functioning brain to be the devil if one, one exists. Hmm, interesting. So, um, Hmm. Interesting. 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 Uh, religion with a real relationship with Jesus is not the same. No, I mean, I agree. I agree. So, um, I mean, that could get into a whole different conversation. I don't know if I have time for that. Um, whiteboard during Black History Month, right? <laughs> Uh, that's a highly ironic statement for an atheist to make. Most atheists accept atheism as he, you guys, okay, you guys need to stop using interesting words because I don't know what that means. Prior, priori, <laughs> I never leave their echo chamber. And they accuse Christians of the same, like a snake calling a worm legless. <laughs> I don't know what that word is, so I'm going to skip over that. Um, okay. How would you identify ego chip? How would you identify? Stop assuming ego chip's belief. You're expanding my vocabulary? Thank you. <laughs> Um, priori, oh Lord, <laughs> priori, uh, 
I feel like having a glass of wine right now and doing whiteboard. I'm going to go put this away. Give me a second. All right. Um, you're coming with me to the kitchen because I have a mic on and now you can hear me in the kitchen. Okay. Yes, that's right. Okay. Let's put that in the kitchen. There we go. Very good. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> okay. I just cracked a beer. All right. Um, Stella Rosa Black. You know, I actually tried Stella Rosa at some point and I wasn't impressed. How like people were hyping it up and then I tried it. I said, not crazy about it. You know, one of my favorite wines is Jam Jar. The sh Sweet Shiraz Jam Jar. It's really cheap. It's really good. Sweet. I like it. Will you pour me a glass of wine too? Maybe, maybe I will, maybe I won't. We'll have to see. Okay, I have to know what you opened. I need to prove, you're not gonna like it. My mom gave me a bottle of wine. She was not storing it well. Let me just say that. It's like table, table wine. The glass was dusty. <laughs> just to give you some context. Uh, I think it's very diluted. Um, that's all I have right now. Uh, do, 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 do. You drink, you heathen! Ah! A priori means to assume in advance, basically without conducting research. Well, I, I agree with you here because, okay, I'm not, I am not assuming anyone's belief system, okay? So don't think I'm talking about you specifically. For context, in case anyone didn't know, less than two years ago, I was agnostic. And I define agnostic as believing in something, not knowing what it is, and not making a commitment to follow God. I'm just kind of play it safe. People will tell you there are other def definitions of being agnostic. That is my definition. Okay. Um, now, with atheists, the interesting thing about someone that calls himself an atheist is that they are, in essence, they are, they're making a claim about something and then usually they'll contradict themselves because some atheists will say, there's no God. They, actually, no, I, I lied. They all contradict themselves, actually. They don't make any sense. Yeah, because if an atheist says there is no God, and then you say, okay, what proof do you have that there is no God? They say, I don't have any proof. Okay, so how can you say for without a shadow of a doubt, there is no God, if you yourself don't even have proof that there is no God? But then they'll throw it back to you and say, well, you prove to me that there is a God. And it's like, hello? Open your eyes. <laughs> like, how do you... <laughs> Like, what do you mean? You're, you're right there. What do you mean? <laughs> um, so to me, it would seem more reasonable for someone to take a more moderate approach and say, I don't know for sure if there is or isn't a God, but I am open to exploring that. I think if you took that approach, I think a lot of people would be, um, <laughs> I feel like people would engage in this conversation a lot better than they are for, for most people. Some people are, I have a lot of conversations with so-called atheists and it, and it's fine, but some people be, become very hostile with these conversations. And it's, I think it's because of, you know, there is no God, I don't have proof. And then there is no type of proof that can prove to me that there is a God. Because that's the other thing, too, is that if you say I have no proof and then I ask you what proof do you need and you tell me I don't know or you tell me um, nothing aside from God coming out of the sky and showing himself. And that tells me that you're not you're not you're not interested. You're not open. Your heart is hardened. And that's that's unfortunate. I'll pray for you. But uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I agree with that statement. Um. 
Gothics, you do not prove a negative. You do not prove something is simply absent. You prove circumstances that contradict God. For example, universe is infinite. No God necessary. You prove circumstances that contradict God. Universe is infinite. No God necessary. What do you mean by infinite? I gotta look up this word too, because you guys are killing me. Infinite. Infinite. Define. Having no boundaries or limits, impossible to measure or cal calculate, immeasurably great or large or boundless, existing beyond or being greater than any arbitrary large value. So you're saying that you prove circumstances that contradict God. Example, universe is infinite, no God necessary. So you're saying that because the universe is impossible to measure, there is no God. But why is there a universe to begin with? I'm, I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> Explain. Please help me. Create a new word schedule. Let's see, uh, we are rational thinking beings. We should be seeking proof, not just accepting what was written down thousands of years ago without actual peer reviewed studies and testable evidence. So here's a question for you, Ego Chip. Where does your source of logic come from? So you're, you're, you're talking, you, you've mentioned a few times about using your brain and researching and thinking logically about something. So where does your, your sense of logic come from? So you got a brain and then you have a mind and, and where does that ability come from for you to, for you to come to this conclusion? Uh, it's how my brain is wired. Right. But like, how do you know that you are, you are thinking logically and you're not just like, bleh, bleh, bleh. like, how do you know that what you're saying right now is logical? Like, how, how can you trust your brain? Maybe that's another way of saying it. How can you trust that what you are saying is logical? Does the sword mean a mod for this channel? Co correct. Yes, it does. Yes. You don't. So wait, you don't believe that you're thinking logical or you don't you you don't know how you are thinking logical. Class is definitely in session, new vocabulary for everyone. You guys leave me alone. <laughs> oh man. Uh Gothics, a question. When you started believing in God, how did you know Christianity was the true religion rather than uh, another one? Because I had an experience with Jesus Christ that is unlike anything that I could ever explain to you. <laughs> there was a pattern of me recognizing things and seeing consistently, okay, this is a Christian. And he's unlike a, what I thought were Christians, because we have to understand there's two. Let me actually get to my whiteboard. I feel like this is going to be a five hour stream. So I hope you guys are buckled up. I'm trying not to. <laughs> I was supposed to go a little while ago, but you guys got me all riled up now. And we got some good conversations. And where is my marker? It's in my pocket. <laughs> it's in my pocket. All right. So. So if I can put this simply. Okay. And then we're going to go back to the to the chat because I asked someone about logic. So I'm going to say this very, very quickly. Oh, oh, wait, yay, 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 stop. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> okay, so. Christian? Christian, part of my journey was realizing that these are two different things. 
Okay. So uh, when people try to talk bad about Jesus uh, or Christianity, I would bet money that they are forming their conclusion based on the Christian. Okay. So how do you tell the difference between the two? Okay, Bible, prayer, and also okay. I can't. I can't spell. Okay, surrendering, repenting, your Bible and your prayer. This is like, this is essential. You need this first. Otherwise, this isn't going to do anything. But you need both of them. Okay. We are so grateful to have this because early Christians didn't have this, but we need that. Okay. But this is essential. If we don't surrender and we don't repent, we, this won't matter. You can memorize all the pages in the Bible. None of that will matter because once you get this done, you get, say with me, folks, say with me. You get the Holy Spirit. And my friend Graham, he described it to me. Before I became a Christian, he described it to me. He said, the Holy Spirit is uh, similar to a toolkit. And the toolkit helps guide you through life. And that was, this again, as a non-Christian, this is how he was explaining it to me. And it made sense to me. I said, okay, so as a, so I, I if I repent and I surrender to, to God, I get the Holy Spirit. I still didn't know what it was. But then when I got it, it all started fitting in. So the problem is, is that you have a lot of people running around who skipped this. They skipped that. They didn't get this. And they just recite the Bible and call themselves a Christian. And the way that they navigate life is drastically different from a Christian who started with this. Drastically different. So that was part of my journey. It wasn't that, uh, yes, research was involved, but I, I was not trying to research Christianity or all these other religions. That's not where I started. It was, I got this and then everything else, <laughs> it was like, it was night and day. I'm telling you guys, if you look at my old videos, or I think some of them are still privated since I got hacked, but if you look at my videos, I, I, my demeanor, it's undeniable. It's night and day how I was acting versus how I am now. And you see this time and time again. If you look up like testimonial videos of ex-gang members or ex-drug addicts or ex-porn stars or ex-whoever, it's like, how did that happen? Was that just self-care? Was just was that just a therapy session? Was that just them, you know, having a, a going to an AA meeting and doing a five step program? Or was there something else supernatural that was happening there? You know, how, how did that happen? So it was. This is my advice to anyone. If you are interested in seeking God, you have to get out of your own way. You have to stop thinking that you know everything. We don't, we don't know everything. Even the people who are the most brilliant individuals are still spiritually bankrupt, <laughs> all right? You can be the smartest person, the most richest person in the world and still be dead. <laughs> so get out of your own way and humble yourself. And luckily and unluckily for me, because you know, the, the, the thing with my story is I was at my lowest point in my life and I was so depressed. I was literally ready to off myself. And then I had an encounter with Jesus and I'm like, oh man. So sometimes people have to go through really bad situations before they reach a point of what do I have to lose? And ideally, I would love for all of you unbelieving heathens <laughs> to get to that point uh, before something bad happens in your life, because that is life and bad things will happen. And um, yeah, so that, that's why I say it's unfortunately, but fortunately, 
I had that, I, I was going through that situation that gave me that opportunity. So I hope that that answered your question because I went on a tangent <laughs> and that's not what I was supposed to do, but you know what? That's the Holy Spirit talking, okay? All right, where's my hair clip? My hair, it's getting hot in here. I need my hair clip. I don't know where it is. All right, we're just gonna, oh, here it is. All right, here we go. Here we go. Okay, so crazy chick says gothics. What? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, gothics, I haven't watched you in a long time. It looks like you've lost weight. Maybe it's just me, but you look awesome. Really? I feel like I've gained weight. <laughs> I'm trying to get back in shape. I went to the gym this morning. Um, well, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Ah, that's kind of fat phobic for you to say. I'm just saying. I'm just kidding. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Not trying, don't get me wrong. Not trying to come after you, ego. I appreciate the engagement. It's all right to not know and be searching. That is all right. That is all right. That is fine. Okay, so I was asking ego a question and then I went on my little uh, thing. And then I told him, okay, so I don't, I already said that is just a theory. Science hasn't proved it. It's just the best fit to what they currently understand. I think they are wrong, but I lack the ability to prove. Um, don't argue with a dinosaur. You'll get Jurassic kicked. That's amazing. <laughs> okay. Um, so let me show you something really quick too. Let me show you something really quick. And then this might, cause I asked, I asked Ego and, and it might be lost in the chat, but I asked Ego, how do you know that you are thinking logically? So if you say something, some statement, and you say, this is the most logical thing. How do you know that your mind is working in a way that's logical? I already answered, I don't know the honest answer. I have no idea what is going on. Okay, so, ch so check this out. Oh man, I need a bigger piece of paper. Hold on a second. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Bigger piece of paper. We will erase this and we will do this right here. I do not know why I'm speaking like I am from a different country. Okay. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Try this on for size. All right, try this on. Let me get some water. Hold on. Come on, man. Okay, check this out. Again, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, uh, um, assuming anyone's spiritual identity, okay? But we're just gonna use atheism for, ex for an example, okay? If I ask an atheist, um, atheist, probably spelled that wrong, atheist. Let's put a heart, because I love atheists, okay? If I ask an atheist, why don't you believe in God? They will say, they will say, illogical, or they'll usually say, because I believe in science. Okay. The interesting thing is Christianity isn't opposed to science. Christianity actually complements science. Um, because I am of the perspective that without God, there is no science. So my question was, how do you know if we're saying that it's illogical to believe in God? 
you're assuming that you're acting logically. How do you know that you are acting logically? Well, some people might even say, oh, I'm acting logically because of science. You know, I used the scientific method to conclude no God. Okay, fair enough. You use the scientific method to conclude that there is no God. There's a problem with that because in order for you to use the scientific method, you have to assume that you're behaving logically. So it goes back to the question, how do you know that your mind is behaving logically? And if the answer is, I don't know, then how do you know person A versus person B is correct? Like, who's correct? If you're both babbling, blah, 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 blah. That's, that's babbling right there. It looks like they're getting powered up. Like they're in, uh, what is it, Dragon Ball Z or something? It's like they're in an anime. Let's put some... <laughs> All right, so they're powering up. <laughs> this guy says, I'm right. But this guy says, I'm right. Well, if if now, and, and this is the crazy part, is some people, not you, but some people will say, well, logic is subjective. It's, it's whatever, what, whatever. Okay, so if logic is subjective, then how did the first people on the planet, how were they able to communicate? If you have your own law of logic and you have your own law of logic, then how are each how is each person supposed to communicate? Like how does that make sense? You like him though? He's cool. This is this is art right here, right here. Let's put a smile. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um so that's something to think of. Like, okay, um, we can say, sir, law uh, uh laws of logic, laws uh so scientific method. All right, cool. Um but how can you even do the scientific method without first assuming that you're behaving logically? So then it comes down to, okay, so where did logic come from? Where did it come from? And how do you know that your way, you, you using your logic, or better yet, why is there universal logic? What are the universal laws of logic? Hold on. The laws of logic. I don't know them off the top of my head. Universal laws of logic. I know one is the law of non-contradiction as an example. Hold on a second. Okay, so the law of non-contradiction, for example, is like if I were to say uh, the road up and down are one and the same implies either the road leads both ways or there can be no road at all. This is a logical complement of the law of non-contradiction. I don't like that example. What's another example? Three laws of logic. Hold on. Ah, okay. The law of identity, uh, for example, the letter P is P. The law of non-contradiction P is not non-P, or the law of excluded middle, either P or non-P. <laughs> so the law of identity says that if a statement such as it's raining is true, then that statement is true. More generally, it says that the statement uh, P is the same thing as itself and is different from everything else applied to all reality. I feel like I got to break this down because even this is like, I'm trying not to confuse people. But all that to say, like, if there is a universal law of logic, like, let okay, here's an example. I am, uh, I'm showering, but I'm in the car. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? You're showering, but you're in the, what, what is, are you showering or are you in the car? So how does that, so that's a law of logic right there, right? So 
why is that universal? Like, why is it if I were to say that statement in any part of the world, everyone would look at me like I'm stupid? What do you mean you're, you're showering and you're in the car? It's a mobile home? Yo. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you just ruined my experiment. You're in an RV? Man, you guys just ruined it. <laughs> you guys ruined it. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Um, <laughs> you guys are hilarious. <laughs> Ah, oh, man. Logic is about cause and effect. You have to be willing to admit to cause and effect if you are want to understand logic. Okay, you want to understand cause and effect. Correct. That's a that's a good point. All right, here I'm going to go back to my whiteboard. You ready for this? Say goodbye to the anime. Oh, here's here's an example. Here's an example. Here's an again. Someone just said it. You can't get married and divorce at the same time. That's like saying I'm I'm married to my ex-husband. <laughs> Something like that. All right, let's say goodbye to the anime. All right. Okay, so Joe says you have to be able, okay, so if we're going to say logic, we have to be willing to talk about cause and effect. Okay. Cause and effect. All right. Logically. Logically. Cause and effect. Earth. Kind of. It's kind of like it 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 it's kind of the earth. What's the cause? What's the cause of the earth? Bueller. Bueller. Yes, I am vegan. What'd you say? Yes, I'm vegan. And yes, I eat meat. Yes, we exist. Uh. Okay, we're talking about cause and effect. Again, this is if we're if we're going based off logic and we're going based off science, then cause and effect, right? Earth, where, how, explain. Stars, moon. I don't I don't know if that's I don't know if that's the moon. <laughs> That doesn't even, that looks like a, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Moon. I need answers. Please give me answers. Okay, yes. Big bang. Big bang. What caused the Big Bang? Where did it come from? Talk to me. Tell me where the Big Bang came from. Jelly, <laughs> jelly bean moon. Where is it? Why is the chat extra quiet? <laughs> I need answers. I need answers. Who isn't religious in this chat? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I promise you, this isn't an echo chamber. I actually love having non-religious people in the chat. Hi, Ken. How you doing? My writing doesn't suck. You suck. Because Gothics, you're quizzing us. Hold on a second, guys. All right, I had to say bye to my husband. Love you. 
Is this extra credit? No. <laughs> Yo, school is lit now. Yes, the class is in session. All right, there will be no drag queen story hours and no uh, sex workers uh, swinging from the chandelier, okay? This is regular school. <laughs> All right. Um, so where, so no one has a, an answer? of where according to science, nothing created the big bang, yet it had the effect to create everything we know. That's God. <laughs> That's literally God. <laughs> what? It hurts my head, man. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, is it okay to chew gum in class? You can do whatever you want. Just, just don't do weird shit. Uh, according to science, we don't know where it comes from. That doesn't mean nothing or God created. According to science, we don't know where it comes from. That don't mean nothing or God created it. Mm. So according to science. So how, how about this? Do, um, how do you guys feel about Christian scientists? What's your opinion on that? I was shocked in my, when I was beginning my journey, I was shocked to, to find out that a lot of scientists that scientists today look up to call themselves Christians or called themselves Christians. They're no longer with us, but how do you guys feel about that? See, I'm repeatedly told God loves you, but the evidence to that is contrary. What about the innocents who suffered needlessly, all the people abused by the church or other religions? That's a whole different whiteboard. That's a whole different whiteboard, but it's a good question. It's a question that I asked. All right, let, you know what? Let's end it. Let's end the whiteboard. And then um, I'll sit down and answer this question. And then I think we'll wrap it up because we're at three hours and 20 minutes. And I got to go. <laughs> so give me a second. Let me uh, just fix my area here. Hold on. Because we're, we're bouncing around so many topics. There's so many great questions in the chat. Thank you guys for hanging out, playing around engaging the muscles the brain muscles okay hold on hello Hello, hello, hello. All right, so the question, all right, so, teaching gothics, new vocabulary. <sighs> yeah, you gotta wash your hands from the whiteboard ink. Yeah, I do. Okay, so, to answer this question, this is a question that I had years ago, and actually, if you guys know who Starsan is, she's a YouTuber uh, who makes videos against the fat pod positivity movement. Um, and she uh, she calls herself Catholic. I'm not Catholic myself. But back when I did not believe, this was maybe like 
15 years ago, I asked her this question. I said, how can there be a God if there's so much suffering in the world? Why do bad things happen to innocent people? And why do why do um, good things happen to bad people? Maybe I should have used the whiteboard for this, but I feel like it's not necessary. Um, so uh, you could have the argument of, okay, what do you mean by good? What do you mean by bad? But we're going we're gonna to skip over that for now and get to the root of it. Okay. Um, if I were to tell you, ego, that I love you so much, and then I forced you to uh, do what I wanted you to do, I forced you to be with me, I forced you to just cater to my every need, I forced you to write me love letters, would that be actual love to you? If I forced you to do all of these things. It's controlling and abusive. Okay. So, uh, okay. I agree. That is controlling and abusive. So my next question is, um, do you do you believe that if someone loves you they'll let you live your life and if you come back to them that's an indicator that they actually love you like is it more of an indicator to force them to love you or is it more of an indicator that they love you if they actually do it on their own free will cannot force love. I agree with you. I agree. You can't force love. Okay. So if God loves everyone, which he does, um, is he a loving God if he were to force people to not do bad things, to not, um, to not kill, to not rape to not steal is he really a bad is he does he really love you if he's forcing you to be a good person get off the table boy you better get where's the nerf gun sorry the cat is acting up <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, Oscar is acting up right now. But he doesn't. It says in the Bible, many places he doesn't love all of us. What what places in the Bible? Are and are we reading the correct context? And I ask this because I, I listen, not you specifically, but I'm, I have to, I feel like I'm always um, trying to explain Levitical laws to people <laughs> because they bring up the tattoo argument, you know? So I just assume there are people that maybe aren't not reading the proper context, but regardless, let's just say, let's forget the Bible for a second. Forget the Bible. Forget it. I think it's easier to just stay focused on the line of questioning that I gave we agreed that it's not loving and it's actually abusive to force someone to be in your presence and to, and to force them to love you back, right? And so if you love someone, I think we can agree that you let that person go and you let that person use their own free will to express love to you. I think we can agree on that. That's exactly what God does. And the thing is, is, th is the world wasn't supposed to be this way. You said that you read the Bible, so you must know about the fall of mankind, Adam and Eve in the garden, and they were with God. And then what happened? They listened to the enemy. Did God say? And then that's, that's what brought sin into the world. So all that to say, 
one of my things that I had trouble coming coming to terms with, and again, this was like 15 years ago, long before I ever committed my life to Jesus, is I was n- I was uncomfortable with the notion that my friends, who I perceived to be good people, would be sent to hell. And again, if we're going based off of what we just said about what is love, is love forcing you to be in my presence? Is, is love me forcing you to love me back? No, that's not love. So if we don't want God when we're on earth, then why the heck would we want God when we die? He's not going to force us to be with him in heaven when we die because we didn't want him on earth. So he's going to respect our wishes because he loves us. But with that, with the reality of free will, you have people doing bad things. Um, But you know what's also interesting is there have been many times where God has intervened and people who don't believe in God get upset. Like if you look if you look at some of like the the top um, anti Christian apologists, if you call, I don't even know what you really call them. Like what, what, are, what are the labels that they use? They usually cite things in the Bible and say, look at here, look at this immoral thing that God did, but God was also helping other people and they're not satisfied. You know? Here's another question for you, Ego. Um, I, Out of curiosity, you don't have to answer this question i'm just curious do you maybe you know i'm not even gonna go there forget it (laughs) i changed my mind (laughs) i changed my mind um uh if god intervened in every evil thing we did then uh we would be mad right then we wouldn't be we wouldn't be free we would just be robots doing whatever God said, so you wouldn't be free. Uh, Let's see, if you believe that the God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Testament, then you, in fact, you worship Jesus at all is a direct violation of the first. No, my friend. No, my friend, it's not. Um, Because if you look in the Old Testament, there uh, were prophecies that were um, preparing people for the coming of Jesus. You, you, You know, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So the so the Old Testament God is the same as the New Testament God. It's it's the same thing. Foretold. There you go. Um If liking bacon is wrong, I don't ever want to be right. You know, I've actually, I don't even, I'm not really crazy about bacon anymore. It's so weird. Like, I don't know. I just find it overrated. I don't know. I feel like there's a cult following for bacon. You know, like, bacon is life. No, it ain't. (laughs) I mean, it's okay. (laughs) Oh, let's see. If you are a parent and you let your child be abused while you watch, that that would make you at least unfit, at worst, a monster. Sure, I agree with you. That's why we're supposed to have an earthly father as well as a heavenly father. Our earthly father or our earthly mother our parents are supposed to raise us. We get back to the problem of sin. How come there are bad parents? How come parents get taken away from kids? That's sin. That's what happens when sin came into the world. So are we going to blame God for that? You know? 
Um, one thing that I, I find interesting is, again, not you, not accusing you, but uh, people who don't believe in God have a tendency to blame God for things. Like, why didn't God do this? Why did God do that? Why is the world like this? God could have intervened. Did God do all of this? Or is there another cause for all of this? I think it's other people. Do, 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 and here here's the other question too because we've been talking about uh why is the world there's no god because there's a lot of uh suffering in the world and and bad things etc if the question is why didn't god intervene and why are um why isn't he stopping people from doing bad things I wonder if you would say the same thing if he started with you. Because then that opens up the other conversation. Well, what do we mean by bad? Because I have a feeling um, if we're saying that God should intervene, he might start with you. I, I mean, so, yeah, something to consider. We're always good in our own eyes. But um, our perception of things don't really matter. I mean, unless we want to end up in the circular reasoning of the whiteboard that I showed you guys earlier. <clears throat> do, 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 do. You ever read C.S. Lewis? Psh, did I ever read C.S. Lewis? You see that up there? Right there. <laughs> I have more in my bookshelf. Yes, highly recommend. Uh, uh. Joe says, the Bible says two things. Thou shall not kill. And two, someone was told to kill another person. This clearly does not make any sense. Okay, so thou shall not kill versus uh, told not to kill another person. So it depends. First of all, it depends on what translation you're looking at. Because kill and murder are two different things. Murder is the killing of someone innocent. That's that's how most Christians are going to define it. And also, by the way, for the record, you're never going to find a a word for word translation because we're translation we're translating something from another language into a bunch of other languages. So you're always going to find uh, inconsistencies in that regard. But if the root of what is uh, being argued in the Bible is true, I think that's the thing that people should focus on. Is Jesus who he says he is? Did Jesus die on the cross for our sins and rose, a dead, rose again? That's really what we should focus on. And then we can have a debate about all the other things. Uh, because uh, understanding whether or not murder is or isn't uh, morally right or wrong isn't going to save us. <laughs> what saves us is us surrendering and accepting Jesus as Lord. So that's really the focus. Forget looking over there. Look at this. And then we can talk about the other stuff. But to your point, yeah, there are different translations. Uh, murder is different from killing. Um, and also, we open up the other argument of why are these things bad anyway? You know, if we're going based off of the whiteboard with the circular logic... And we're saying that, okay, murder is bad because of people. Murder is bad because of society. Murder is bad because of X, Y, and Z. 
well, who cares what other people say about it? What does God say about it? We're just like, <clears throat> most people think that God created sin and didn't, why is this lagging so bad? And, and he didn't, when God created everything, he said it was good and perfect, perfect creation made by perfect God, human sins, sin, uh, the sin is to miss the mark. Yeah. Everything that's good is of God. God is our standard of good. Um, he is not the author of bad <laughs> or evil. Uh, Let's see. Um, okay, so hold on. If there are at least two translations, then no one will ever know the real uh word how can you specifically say you represent the word of god when you don't know so are we uh, okay so again if we if we're going to use that as the argument then no one knows the real god and again the main focal point we can debate about tattoos whether or not christians can have tattoos we can debate whether or not christians can eat bacon we can debate homosexuality we can debate getting drunk we can debate the context of murder or killing we can debate all of these things but are any of these things the thing that is actually going to get you into the kingdom of heaven no the thing that's going to get you in the kingdom of heaven kingdom of heaven is accepting jesus christ as a lord and savior and repenting and surrendering to him that's what's going to get us in now, like I said, when I showed you the whiteboard, when you surrender, you repent, you get the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what works in you to change you from the inside out. So you don't need to know every single thing about the Bible before you come to the foot of the cross. You, you really don't. That's a that's a process. Like me, when I surrendered to Christ, it wasn't like a switch and I'm like, I'm a Christian. Wow. I've seen the light. That's not how it works. I promise you guys, it's not. I'm still a mess. <laughs> Maybe not not as a hot mess, but I'm still a mess. It's a process. So I have to every day surrender everything to the Lord and let him continue working in me. And every day I get closer to, uh, I, I, I act more like Jesus. So that's called sanctification. It's a process. And when you get the Holy Spirit, you get discernment, you get wisdom, you get a guide. So if you have any questions, they're not going to go unanswered. But I think, like I said, I think a lot of people, and I don't know if this is your case, but I think a lot of people are focusing on the thing that really, if you really think about it, it doesn't really matter. That would be like me. Um... That would be like me uh, saying that, uh, actually, let me le use an example. If I were to imagine, assuming that this is true, uh, the flood, I believe it's true. Uh, and if we're saying that uh, Noah's Ark was being built to save people from a flood, all right, that would be like Noah building this Ark and then him saying, get on the ark, get on the ark, because there's going to be a flood. But then me being like, mm, I don't like the paint on the ark. I don't like how it looks. So I'm not getting on. That's what that's what it I equate it to. It's like, I, I don't I don't like that. <laughs> but that has nothing to do about the fact that a flood is going to come and wipe away everything. So that, that's what I think. And as you guys can tell, like I said, I get, I get in little mini, um, not, not mini, I wouldn't even call them debates, but I'm always having philosophical conversations with other believers. There are things that not every believer agrees on, but these things are things that either A, can be resolved with wisdom 
uh, by the Holy Spirit, or they're things that really don't even matter. <laughs> like they don't matter. <laughs> Obviously, understanding the concept of of uh, the context of murder versus killing is important. But again, that's not what gets you saved. Oh, man. Nathan says, are you in the romantics of Bible verses and cherry picking different things to make a point is the same as clipping videos to misrepresent someone's opinion? Are I are you in the romantics of Bible verses and cherry picking? No, not at all. I'm in the romantics of looking at the full context and getting a Bible study guide and getting another Bible study guide and consulting with other people who are further along in my faith than me and praying about it, asking the Holy Spirit for wisdom to guide me towards the truth and help help renew my mind and correct my thinking if I'm not um, understanding something. I don't like cherry picking. And I definitely don't like reading a verse without reading the chapter before and after. Because here's the other thing about the Bible. Sometimes you'll read a verse without realizing that that verse is going to be cited five books later. The full context, you're not going to get the full context if you just read one line. Full context and not singling out verses. Yeah, I can't do that. Do, do, do. Sushi time. I haven't had sushi in a while. And sushi law. Yo, y'all want to talk about sexual sin. Like I've been looking at statistics and porn has become a massive problem in the U.S. How it gets that bad. You know, I've done many videos on this and maybe we'll do it again. Maybe we'll find a different way uh, to articulate it. But it, I, I made a video like two years ago talking about what it looks like if you were to follow the Bible versus if you were to follow culture. And I did a side-by-side -side comparison. And, uh, you know, if you were to follow culture, it's like, for example, uh, marriage doesn't mean anything. It's, it's just whatever. Uh, gender, it's a social construct. You can pick your gender. Um, uh, let's see, you know, um, a household is supposed to be God. Husband, wife, child. If you follow culture, it's just, eh, whatever. Kids can pick their gender. <laughs> it's just, it's all over the place. So another point to this is like, okay, criticize the Bible all you want. Let's look at the ills of the world. And, and let's consider if there is any correlation to the sins of this world and what is forbidden in the Bible. And the answer is yes. All the time. That should spark a conversation, an internal dialogue. Why would the Bible say, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this? And you look at world and you're like, wow, they're doing all of that. Maybe there is something to this 2,000-year-old man-made book. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> ah, maybe, 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 maybe. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, we're going on three hours and 45 minutes. I think I've reached my cap, okay? I think I've reached my cap because I would like to finish editing a video. For context, I'm editing a reaction video to a reaction video. And we're going to be talking about Melanie Mack, who recently got banned for spewing homophobic rhetoric on the Twitch platform. And there was an individual that responded to Melanie. His name is Asmund Gold, um, really popular YouTuber. Um, and he made a response to her. And the response is very similar to a lot of the conversations that we have on this channel where I don't think maybe he or they or anyone who talks about uh, these types of things are considering alternate arguments. Uh, so yeah, I made a video. I'm editing it right now. I'm hoping that it's going to be out tomorrow. We'll see, but definitely this week. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. 
Um, I'm slowly slumping down in my chair. Oh yeah, because this is not a line. <laughs> Wait, do I have? Oh, cause I do have an AI tracking and sometimes like it follows me. See? So I just didn't position it right. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, so, uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me. All right, I'm back. We still streaming? No, I'm, I'm about to go. I've been here for a minute. I'm about to go. Ego Chip says, I have not insulted a single person. I merely have opinions you do not share with me. If you think that is insulting and offensive, you might as well just join the wolf called. I'll say this, and then I will end the chat. I'll say this, okay? Um, how do I put this? First of all, I think um, Christians, assemble! Christians, assemble in the chat! <laughs> assemble! What does the Bible say about being as um, innocent as doves and shrewd as snake, as snakes? And what does it say about uh, being salt of the earth? You know, just a little bit of salt. What do you do with salt? You don't you don't pour a whole cup of salt onto your food because then it'll be salty. You just need a little bit of salt to bring out the flavor. Just a little bit. Okay. Um, that being said, I would remember that and not let your passion get the best of you. Now, alternatively. The agnostics, the atheists, the pagans, the whoever. Don't take it the wrong way. We care about your soul. And I think that's honestly a very loving, um, that, that's a very loving thing to consider. It's like we care about your soul. We care about you. We're trying to get you to think about it. And maybe some sometimes the way that we express it isn't the best way. I'm sure there are some people that try to throw the Bible at one another as just a way to say, I told you so, or I know more than you, pride, pride, and pride is a sin. But I think for the most part, this community has been fairly, um, has been fairly uh, reasonable with their approach, at least from what I can tell. So yeah, we, we, we don't, you know, we care about you. Anyways, I need to go. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. My name has been Gothics, but my real name is Vanessa. You may call me whatever you like. I appreciate you coming here and listening to me ramble for a couple of hours. Um, thank you, everyone, for all of your uh, super chats. Thank you so much again to Rosario. Thank you. Um, announcements my merch is back online if you just go to gothics.tv you'll see a link to my merch that's there their shirt right here is what i'm is one of the merch items that i that i have and it's the cognitive dissonance shirt which you can't really see there's my nerf gun um also if you want to check out my documentary it's streaming on lore.tv right now so if you use code gothics you'll get a seven day free trial so go watch it and let people know what you think review it on imdb review it on uh rotten tomatoes make a make a review on youtube if you have a channel you know we would really appreciate that and um yeah man thank you all so much for hanging out this has been a blast i am so grateful for um the uh diversity in this chat and i don't mean diversity of skin color because i don't really care about that i mean diversity of thoughts i love it i don't like speaking to echo chambers it gets my brain pumping it's wonderful i love it so much so yeah um enjoy the rest of your day guys all right Mwah, love you and i will see you next time Bye bye